Do we need a script or anything like that? I mean, if you want to overcomplicate. If you want to overcomplicate. Is the concept of a script going to help you? Sure. I could give you verbatim what those. How much? You, you, you with us? Yeah. You sell a bunch of insurance, don't you? I did. Okay. I took a break. Okay. I ain't mad at it. The game changer was when I stopped using a script. Yeah. <laughs> So, so the, the, the concept, the structure of a script is important. Okay. But again, if I gave you his script word by word for everything he sold, and I said, go use it right now, you think you'd be able to use it? You'd be able to read it. Okay. Yeah. I, you, do you think people on the other end of the phone would be able to tell you're reading? Yeah, absolutely. If not, go ahead and not give a fuck. <laughs> That kind of guy. You know what I'm saying? Like it helps you more down the road than it helps you day one. Because day one you're going to overcomplicate it and you're going to read. And you're going to sound like a telemarketer who doesn't know what they're doing. And dude, New Age is a book appointment like crazy. And they get over the nerves in two seconds. You know what I mean? And all I wanted to, what to do was help them overcome the fear. The script's the easy part. It's being real. You know what I mean? You can memorize it in six minutes tonight. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, can you say it with the same tonality you said, hey, I got your jacket, can we meet up? That's what takes time because most people want to overcomplicate it, plus there's someone on the other end giving pushback. Does that make sense? Does it make sense? So that part, the skill set part of it will take time. But the like, fuck it, just go for it. Y'all can do that right now. And if you make enough phone calls, like if you made 6,000, 250 phone calls this month? That's a slow button for me. I, 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 like, honestly, didn't do as much as I should have. That's good. Hey, the person that wrote down 25, if they're here, they're like, whoa. Right. <laughs> That's true. Or our, our team 200. Like 250 to 300 a day. He's at least, good. you know, He's, yeah. yeah. And so I was really late to this month. I mean, do you I count it manually. Like, do you go like, or yeah, I've got it on tracker. But honestly, what I do, I, I learned it from him at the conference. Is you just look at your, um, you look at your, uh, yeah, exactly. So you sit there and you look at your recent calls, and you're like, how many times did I go through and call people? Right. And so you know, like I triple dial on everybody until I get them on the phone. Yeah. You know. We're gonna work on your stuff today because okay. that's a lot of phone calls. And not 80 enough. appointments. I know, exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's not Do enough. you track your pickups? Um, no, my Contact rate? Mm -hmm. You should. Okay. I will. Because I'd like to know how many you con I assume, I assume that's where the issue is. Yeah, exactly. Most of the people don't pick up. I would say 95% well, of the people that's, don't pick up. That's mm -hmm. the business. Yeah. That's not going away. Right. But even if it were 95% didn't pick up, that means you still have 10%, 625, 5%. 312 people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we can improve that. Mm -hmm. But still, it's now there's ways to make it increase more than 95%. Right. And what I'm going to beg you to change yes. is to stop using words that say everybody and everything and no one and all the lead. You're, you're, you're so broad yes. with the words that come out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. I promise it's messing you up here. Yeah. And if you're messed up here, if you, meaning, if you believe most don't answer, you also believe most won't book an appointment with you. So if you call him and you don't believe he's going to book an appointment with you, do you believe that your tonality is going to be different than if you 100% believe he's going to book an appointment with you? You don't think the tonality would be different? Oh, my tonality would totally be different. Okay. Yeah. So do you believe your tonality being different would cause you to book less appointments? Yeah. Um, yes. If my tonality is better, then obviously. Correct. And you okay. also told me you believe your tonality would be better if you didn't believe mm -hmm. that they're not going to answer. Yeah. So the work is here that you need to change your belief level. Yeah. Does that make sense? So then the question becomes, do you know who you're calling? Yeah. Describe to me who you're calling. The people that I'm calling are mostly just final expense. They're older, silver leads. So. Okay. Know. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Their age is what? Um, Age, I think, is Roughly. like three, three to six months. No, their physical age. Oh, their physical age mm -hmm. is typically over 60. Over 60, okay. Yeah, 60 to 80. What percentage of them do you think have children and grandchildren? Most of them. Okay. If I ask them what they think about the person you're calling, 
Do you think they would say they're just a final expense lead? No. Okay. Yeah. So now let me ask you again, who are you calling? I'm calling grandparents and parents. I, what, that's what I do is I say, I'm like, Grandparents and parents who what? Who either, most of them already have insurance. That's the whole thing. Whatever. You're doing it again. <laughs> I know. <laughs> who are you calling? I'm calling people's parents and grandparents. Okay. That need final expense insurance. Why do they need it? Because they want to leave a legacy. To who? To their kids and their grandparents. Why? Because they don't want to be a burden on their kids and grandparents. They love their family. Yeah. Same as you do. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So when you're calling people, you understand you're calling people who give a shit about their family, which is why they filled out something to have you call them. Mm -hmm. They're not just final expense people. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You're making them that. Right. Which makes you not believe that they need help for their family to not leave it. You don't really believe that. I have to drag it out of you. Uh, right. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the way you look at who you're calling is going to impact the way you speak to them. Because yeah. if I was like, eh, she's just a fucking agent, right. we wouldn't be here today. <laughs> but who are you? I am Lindsay. Like, that I'm an agent. That has I how many children? Four. That have great names. Yes. That you want to take care of. Exactly. That, like me, you forget their ages because there's so many of them. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? But you're here for them. <laughs> and those people are relying on you to stop thinking that they're just final expense leads who don't answer the phone and don't get approved. Right. Yep. They need that from you. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't do that, he ain't gonna call them. Right. Because you have the fucking leads. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. He might call them when they turn into bronze. He, he might. <laughs> he might. He might. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, and by the end of the day, buckle up. If you were here on my team, right, originally, back in the day, yeah. one of the things that we would do as I'd go, give me your leads. Mm -hmm. Oh, we would do that. Give, give them to me. Yeah. Give me the ones that said no. Give, and I go, watch this. And I'd sit down and I'd call. Yeah. And I'd go, make 10 G's this weekend. And I'd be like, hey, Steve, his wife was dependent on him because then I'd tell the whole story. Yeah. 1800 bucks here. Joy, here's the story. Here's the kids. Here's the situation. 1200 bucks here. And I'd print money mm -hmm. on leads that you didn't believe in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so you have to sit down and go like, here's who I'm calling. Mm -hmm. It's their family. They're not these, they're families. Yeah. That ha they have family. Now, be clear. That didn't drive me to get into this business. Yeah. It was the money. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah. But I had to understand from their perspective. Right? Because if I didn't understand from their perspective, who am I? I'm just the asshole who wants a bunch of money, which I still am. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? But I had to learn how to be more, um, what's the word I want to use? Like, I had to have more range to who I was. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I had to work on understanding what I was really going into. And it's the same with agents. Yeah. You know what I mean? When I was recruiting agents at the beginning, I'm like, yo, he's an override. He's an override. She's an override. This is gonna be fucking great. I'm gonna be filthy rich. You know what I mean? Three years in, you know how many agents I had? One. It was myself. <laughs> His name was John Wetmore, and he sucked. <laughs> Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because he thought the lead sucked and no one would pick up and the numbers were bad and they were busy and they were on vacation and they didn't really want it. And I thought all these things too, you know? And I had to learn the, the view of it, right? And so then if we understand the view of it, what happens is then by default, you're gonna speak different. You, you don't even think about it, okay? So that's step one to get better at this thing. Your belief will definitely change the way you communicate, okay? Next, I mean, next from there, it's like, then we can get intentional, right? Now, today, I can control what you think I believe because I can control my tonality and my questions and my, like, that takes time, though. You know what I mean? There's still a belief level there. Yeah. And, you know, for me, it's like, I'll give you an example. I used to, um, when, I was, I, when I was getting trained, one of the things, again, I come from, field sales, yeah. kitchen table every night, yeah. driving on, hell, I used to fly to, I used to fly to Utah to sell, I fly to Ohio to sell, and I had leads in, at one point, like Amanda was talking the other day, and I don't know why, we had this really weird conversation about how Georgia is so fucking, like, uh, <laughs> stuck on counties. Right. Right? 
And where I come from, you're from Lynn. You're not from Essex County. Like, I didn't even know what county I lived in. I don't even know if we had a county police station. I don't know anything. And the cities that were in the county were the cities that were in the county. Right. They're, like, Ackworth is in four counties. I'm like, on yes. what plant? And then people, what do you live in Ackworth, but I have a fucking Cartersville address? Right. And I'm like, how can you live in a city but have an address that's not in the city? And I don't, we were having this whole weird conversation, right? So Amanda, because of Leeds, we got on it because she knows like every, the whole state by county, because we do Leeds by county, which I don't understand still to this day. And then we got on this weird conversation about what I just said. And she's like, I can tell you where every fucking county in the state is. Why? Because I had Leeds in all of them. You know I mean, so flying to Ohio, flying to Utah, and I had 50 something counties in Georgia I'd go to to sell, right? But what I always understood about 100% of them, I don't give a shit if I was in a trailer home that had dog shit all over the floor. Right. Like, I remember going to this one house in Ohio, date area. I walk in, an agent, Terry, I sent some agents up there to Ohio, because I was going up there, I'm like, hey, you go, I'll give you these, blah, blah. He goes up and he, same thing, he comes back, he's like, ah, she beat, blah, blah. Give me your leads, I take the leads, I go to Ohio. One of the appointments I go to is one of the leads that he said, they don't need insurance, they're, uh, they're broke as shit, they don't have nothing, blah, blah. So I go up there, trade them, walk in, the entire house, has you ever been in a hoarder's house? Anybody ever been in a hoarder's house? Yes. It, it was one of those. But there was a trail of newspaper leading to their area, the kitchen, right? And the newspaper, it's the only place you could walk because everything else was piles of shit. Not shit but piles of shit on the newspaper. So shit trash over here, shit like shit on the newspaper. So I'm walking in the newspaper going over, right? We get in, we sit down. I write our policy to like 200 bucks a month, final expense, right? Because she had a bunch of kids and grandchildren dude didn't know about. And then I wrote her an annuity for, I think, I think I transferred like 80 Gs. It wasn't a massive amount, but she sure shit wasn't broke. Right, yeah. You know what I'm saying? If she, that, that's her, probably her whole mentality is that she's buying things like money and whatever and doesn't want to spend and whatever. So she has money left over. Maybe. But for me, he, for him, she was just a broke final expense person in a trailer home. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, here's her kids' names. Here's her grandkids' names. There was something that happened in the family that someone else died and had to go through the shit show that people go through when they die with no insurance. It was a whole story to me. Yeah. I mean, she bought insurance like that. But I had to ask questions and uncover the story and who she was. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so from, from that point on where I'm like, you ever, you ever have a bad batch of leads? Mm -hmm. Like, is there really a bad batch of families who don't give a shit about their kids? Is that, is that what you just told me? So when, someone, when an agent calls me and they're like, I had a bad batch of leads, I'm like, you tell me uh, there's a, you a whole group of leads that didn't give a shit about their family? Go where you're looking at. Bad batch of people. <laughs> they're hard. They're hard. I don't believe that. I don't, I don't believe that. Do I think you can have a bad streak? Sure. Yeah. Shit happens. But you'll never convince me that you can give me a stack of leads who don't love their family and not want to leave a shit show behind when they die. You'll never convince me that. Well, the lead came from an acquirer. You could get an ad for the contact page. Terrible. It gets it's you longer to work It through. doesn't mean that the people behind the lead are any different. No, that's correct. So my view of them is different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And again, for me, it's like, what's the default? If you look at that as a bad batch, you're not gonna make any money on it. Yeah. Give, I promise you, anyone wants to test me, give me your bad batch of leads. I will give them to another agent and they'll print money and we'll show you the agents that they wrote. I've done it a thousand times in my career. So for me, it's, it just became for me about belief level. Does that make sense? I refuse to believe there's a bad batch of leads. Well, I'll look at them different. I'll go into them different. I'll approach them different. I'll call them different. I'll speak to them different. Does that mean I have success on every order I buy? No. I just refuse to say the words. I just won't say them because I know it'll mess up the way I think about them. Does that make sense? I hear you. But select quote, who's worth an obnoxious billions of dollars does not believe you. Who's making more money on internet leads? You or a select quote? Because they believe in them differently than you do. Does that make sense? They wouldn't be making billions of dollars if they weren't good, right? So it's like, what's the belief level in it? Belief level will fuck you up in this world, you know? And then if you're, if you're starting to like build an agency, 
and you get an agent maybe that doesn't have the money to put into the good leads. And you're like, those leads suck. You're giving, to me, you're giving that agent who that's their only option, no shot. Because your belief level in it's what? Right? So part of building something big is learning to pass belief level. You do that, now you go like, eh, it's agents, fuck them. You go, do you do that with your kids, your family? I don't know where you're at in life. You know what I mean? Any, this is anybody. But like, it, I, and I'm, the, I'm one of the worst. I'm by default negative. I'm a negative person by default. I wake up negative. I look at situations negative. I think when someone and me are not on the same page, I think they're doing something to me. I think when someone cuts me off on traffic, they did it to piss me off. I think when someone's driving 20 and a 40, they're doing it to drive me fucking nuts. So, like, that's my default. So this stuff I'm talking about now is hard work for me. And it's probably gonna be hard work for y'all. You know what I'm saying? But what I learned is, like, people are watching. It's just like kids. Your kids are watching you, right? And you can teach them all you want. You know how often I try to tell Maddox not to cuss? <laughs> you tell Maddox not to cuss? Oh, I see. 12. Yeah. I'm breaking up my 13 year old, too. Because we cuss a lot, too. Yeah. You know how often I tell him? <laughs> what do you think it is? I don't know. Uh, five times a day. I don't know. I don't tell him at all. Yeah. Because I know I'd be fucking hypocrite. Exactly. See, my wife can tell me about it, but I'm like, babe, I used to cuss with friends when I was that age. Now, nah. don't say it around your mom or anything. So what does he? What he watches me, mm -hmm. right? So now, when he's in an environment where he shouldn't, he doesn't. Right. But when me and him are on the golf, I'll never forget the first time we're on the golf course. So we're learning to play golf. We just start in like August. This past August, we started playing. He started playing. I've played a little bit over the years, but very little. His friends got into it at school. Some of them live on the course. And um, so that his school's here and you cross the street and you're in the back side of Marietta Country Club. And then the front side of Marietta Country Club's over here. I live on the back side of the club. I'm not in the club, but I'm right behind the property. Yeah, we're across the street on the other side. Huh? We're across the street on the other side, over by Hayes and by Mountain. Oh, got it. Literally. Got it. Yep. Yeah. Um, so his buddies, during football season, some of them chose to play golf. It's the same season. So some of his buddies stopped playing football and they went to play golf. And we're like, where's so-and-so? He's like, he's playing golf? What the hell? Yeah. So then Maddox, because his buddies were playing, started getting into it. And I'm like, I've always wanted to learn golf, but I only know people that are really good. And I don't love playing when people are really good because they hit the ball 16 miles and I hit it to like the bathroom door when I'm supposed to be hitting it like 200 yards that way. And I want to like, it's not, it wasn't fun. So I barely played, but he got into it and I'm like, yo, I'm gonna start playing. Right. So I get in and uh, him and I start playing in August and we play a good bit. And I've started finally like getting to a point where I'm getting halfway decent because I, I play a decent. I can only play nine holes, so like 18, five hours stresses me out. So I'm like, give me nine, takes me 90 minutes. I'm in and out. And so Maddox is learning and he's a pretty good athlete, but he's not the type yet. It hasn't clicked for him to like put in work outside of practice and on his own. Like he's a great baseball player we don't ever really play at the house or we don't ever go to the batting cages on our own. He, his team practices twice a week. If he's with school, they practice four days a week after school. So he gets six there. And then if I take him to lessons, he'll go. But if we're just at home, he won't do it, right? And so with golf, he starts playing golf. So baseball, he's great, but he doesn't put in extra work. But as he's getting older, the competition's getting better. And I'm like, yo, when you were six, you're the best athlete on the field. But we were dudes who didn't know if they were playing soccer or baseball at the time. <laughs> Does that make sense? Like, that was your competition, right? And so as we started leveling him up, he's, he's going further and further down the skill list, if you will, right? And I start talking to him like, yo, you're gonna start putting in some work, dude. If you wanna be as good as him, I promise you he's taking way more ground balls than you are. That's why he can field it like this and you're like hoping you get it. You know, hitting all the, and I talked to him about this stuff. So long story short, he's used to just being good, right? We get into golf, he's terrible, right? He doesn't, golf's a different game. Any of y'all play? No one plays golf? Oh my God, it's such a hard game to play. That's probably why no one plays it, right? But I'm like you, whenever I have friends that play and I just suck, you know, yeah. I don't even want to play wrong. Yeah, like, I'll be like, yeah, I'll play I'll just make fun of me, so I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't take crazy long to get, I've learned. Now, like I played with a buddy last night who plays in tournaments and 
like, like apparently putting is really hard when like you, I play putt putt. He's yeah. I'm going and I just walk up, I don't get ready or nothing, I just go and look up, and boop, and it yeah. goes in. He's like, after like eight holes, he's like, What the fuck is happening? I'm over here lining shit up, measuring it. You yeah. know. Now I can't hit the ball as far as him. Right. You know what I mean? But it evened out at the end. And again, I'm learning. So anyway, I get all mad. He gets frustrated with golf. So slamming the club and I'm trying to teach him. Like, dude, you got to stop showing the emotion. Because when you show the emotion, do you think when you get up there to swing the club, you're, if, you're, if you lack confidence that you're never going to hit it, do you think you're ever going to hit it? I'm literally teaching Maddox this at 12. So he, he logically gets it. But controlling is hard. And probably like three months ago, he's, we go through the course and he doesn't slam his club at all. But we're on like whole set of nine. And uh, he goes, the bad hit I just made that uh, we're talking about, he goes, he's quiet for a second. He goes, Dad, do you care if I cuss? Because <laughs> he hadn't done it before. Like he would go like, and he makes fun of me a lot, like, because uh, I have a potty mouth. And uh, he, so he asked permission. I was like, sure, next 15 minutes. And he let out all, I'm like, how do you know all these words? And as it was coming out of my mouth, I'm like, that's right. Yeah. I know why he knows these words. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, wow, he was watching the whole time. He knows my belief level. My belief level is I can cuss whenever I want. Is it a good one? Probably not. But I'm broken in that sense. You know what I mean? I'm like, ah, I try. I pretend I try to get better, but I really don't. I'm like, what are you going to do? So my point of all that is, is you start, again, wrapping around to some of the stuff you said. You're trying to, I, I don't know if you're trying to build an agency or not. If you're not, amen. But if you are, your people are watching. You know what I'm saying? So if I don't have a belief level in internet leads, my advice is to you, if you want to be able to sell a lot of insurance, you sure as shit better get one. You know what I'm saying? And show that you have belief in it. And show that they work. Because if select quote can make it work, I'm certain you can make it work. You know what I'm saying? You sell a lot of insurance. I'm sure you can figure it out. Is it a different approach? Sure. Build for different belief. Sure. Different clientele. Yeah, they're trying to hide on the internet. They're different. I ain't, I ain't confused at the difference. But you'll never convince me that they don't have a family and they don't want to leave them living like shit when they die. I'll never believe that in my life. All right? So the approach we have to pay attention to. And if we're trying to build, we have to, we have to, we have to build belief in other people along the way. You know what I'm saying? I didn't, dude, when I started, I hated fucking internet leads. We're getting them too. They're a different breed. Mickey Mouse, you know what I mean? At gmail.com. Like, you know how many times I got that? Lots. You know, it works really good. They're not that smart. They'll give you a little bit of info, and then when it comes to email and phone number, they mess with you. But dude, a lot of times the address is right. You know how many internet leads I've door knocked and printed money on? When I, I'm, a, I'm a tracking nerd. I don't know how well you know me, right? But I track all kinds of shit. I'm a complete Excel geek. And so over the years, I tracked all my stuff. By far, not even in the realm of closeness. Now, I wasn't selling IU all the so I can't compare. But mortgage protection, final expense, internet leads, by far, internet leads, highest premium per app. By far. It was double direct mail mortgage leads. By far. Dude, it was like fucking 2,800 bucks average. You're a beast in mortgage. I'm talking average for my team. Does that make sense? Guys who are selling $40 final expense apps and don't believe they work. It was like $2,800 an app average for the team. Which means yours could be five, six Zs. Who knows? You know what I'm saying? But the getting in was different. Why was it higher? Higher level clientele. They're trying to hide behind the internet. They're doing more research, doing more searches. They tend to have more money. Does it make sense? It's a different client than a mail lead or a Facebook ad lead. They're different people. You know what I'm saying? Now, flows ratio, suck ass. You don't consider Facebook lead generation leads? No. No, because it's a search lead versus an ad lead. You're talking about like a Google like search. Like I would consider a Google lead the same as an internet lead. Yeah. yeah. I'm talking I search for a lead versus I search for a lead and Facebook gives me an ad. Gotcha. Internet lead in the moment someone's searching. Yeah, sorry. Facebook stalks the fuck out of you until you fill it out. <laughs> so I, I, I think overall I do consider them, them very different. Yeah. Do I think there's some overlap? Always. You know what I mean? And I'm never going to say every Facebook lead is different than every internet. I'll never be that guy. There's definitely some overlap. But if I if I had you do broad overall statistics, 
they're definitely going to be different. You're definitely going to be lower premium on Facebook. You know what I mean? This guy's playing fucking Farmville that see an app and they're like, oh yeah, shit, I need life insurance. So I forgot. You know what I'm saying? Where in, in my experience, internet's much more like, yo, I know what I'm looking for. I'm searching here. I'm trying to find the best price, best value, best shit like that. Yeah. It's, it's the reality, everything. That's the thing. That's the difference is that they just it's, did it. They remember. Yeah. It's, what to get them right then it's everything. Yeah. Now, what I will teach you is don't get too excited about any one or too disappointed about another because I'm a 100% sure 18 months from now, y'all be working different leads. I'm 100% sure. Why? Well, it's the evolution of business. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The guys that were doing debit routes in the 70s, do you think one day they were like, there'll be Facebook leads? They didn't see the shit coming. Do you think technology is going to stop? Do you think people coming up with new ideas is going to stop? Do we think it's any of us in this room are going to invent something amazing? I, I don't think it's going to be me. <laughs> right? I think someone out there is going to create something that none of us see to acquire clients. Yeah. Because in my 12 years in business, that's been the evolution. They've got that new FCC being passed in yeah. August all the way. So. I don't even look at stuff like that. Years ago. It just keeps, yeah. You know who knows nothing about it? This guy. <laughs> you know why? I don't give a shit, dude. There's really smart people who figure out ways around all that stuff. I just don't care. Yeah. I don't get caught up in stuff. I'm saying something new is probably going to come. No, something new is 100% coming. <laughs> yeah. 100% coming. Even if, even if they actually do pass it, like, I don't see it being enforced. So if you really think any of your priorities are going to go after the new insurance agents, I don't know. I don't know what it is, so I can't. I don't. I, I don't want to know. <laughs> I don't know, or can't. to be honest, I just don't because I know there's enough people with power they are gonna figure shit out, and I don't have to be one of those people. Does that make sense? For me, I just fucking run plays. I'm like the running back in the backfield. I don't have to know. I don't know why they said run his fucking face over. I don't care. Give me the ball. Let me run. Does that make sense? And I believe I can score. That's the approach every day, you know? Yes. Not that I didn't have different ones, but I had to learn and be taught from people like, if I think about all the noise, man, think about the people who are lower in sales or who have less belief level and like, think what they're gonna, like they're overthinking, no offense, contracting. You start talking to her about FCC, it's a wrap. Overarching, maybe not her individually. Does that make sense? But people overthink over here. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I ain't gonna be that guy. And I don't have to hide it because I don't know shit about it. Because when I see it, I move on. I delete. Facebook groups that talk about it, I move on. The podcasts that talk about it, I don't watch them. They don't give a shit. Because I know insurance is never gonna stop being sold. <laughs> and I know that, like Primerica is my favorite example to talk about. Because I don't know a lot about a lot of things, but I know that they were around in whatever the 60s or 70s or whatever it was. And they look up their share price today. Yeah. They're like 250 bucks a share in whatever their market cap is. It is build someone look it up like this billions and billions and billions of dollars. This cat built a company working with like part time high school basketball coaches with no leads, no, no technology, no CRMs, no dial systems, no dial trackers, no, no, nothing, no phones, nothing. And he built a multi-billion dollar fucking company, right? And some of the messages that filled out are like, I need to know what CRM. I'm like, yo, they didn't give a fuck about a CRM. They didn't give a shit about what to use to call. They didn't care about all this stuff because you can always speak to people. Does that make sense? We're on one of the busiest rooms in Kennesaw. I promise you go stand outside with a sign that says, I sell life insurance and you put your phone number. You stand out there long enough, you're going to get someone to call you or stop. Eventually you'll get it. <laughs> Meaning worst case, we got a guy in our group that issued 400 grand last year, cold dormant, no leads. Yeah. Cold. I I've interviewed that. some. Yeah, I yeah. see that too. Yeah. I follow the guy. Cold yeah. door knocking. Yeah. Meaning, did y'all did y'all follow him? Anyone heard follow him? Did you see what he did yeah. Sunday? No. No, I haven't. I haven't been on social media. All right. Yeah. So Sunday, this past Sunday, he uh keep in mind, he sold four hundred grand this year. Last year. Issued. Mm -hmm. Okay. And for those that don't know, cold door knocking, meaning he doesn't buy leads, he'll drive to the neighborhood behind us, park his car, knock door to door. Hey, I'm Jorge, do you need any life insurance? Hey, I'm Jorge, do you need any life insurance? Don't need FCC. Hey, I'm Jorge, need any life insurance? Hey, Jorge, need any life insurance? 
100 a day. Five, six days a week, 100 a day, 400 grand. Some people are like, that's retarded. I buy leads, make 600. She's like, 400 Gs? Fuck, I'm in. <laughs> Does that make sense? You don't have to worry about nothing. Knocks on doors. Hey, Jorge, need life insurance? 400 Gs? That's the whole thing. There's way less than that way. Hey, Reese, good news. I've hit the mic 84 times. I can tell. It just hit me like a ton of bricks. I'm like, what do I keep hitting? Oh, this fucking stupid mic that I wanted you to put on. So it is my fault. I apologize. But for him, he doesn't think about nothing. Do I think it's the absolute best, most efficient way to sell 400 grand? No. But how many hours does he tell Who cares? I worked 80 hours a week and made 435 bucks 15 years ago. Guy like me doesn't give a shit. You know how many hours I would work to make 400 grand 15 years ago? Now today I'm asking the question you're asking, but that's me today. But what I'm saying is like, dude, there's probably, how many people in this country? Someone know the number? I think it's like 400 million or something. I don't know. Someone Google it back there. Not y'all. They'll do it. Someone tell them, how many people are in the country are Adults. Just curious. 333.3 million. Do you know the exact number for kind of life? No, well, after the point three. <laughs> three, 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 what's that line that just goes forever? For me, I don't need to worry about people that overthink because there's 333 million people in the, in the country. So if you're not going to be coachable and do the things and do what it takes, like someone in that batch wouldn't give a shit if it was 120 hours a week, make 400 grand. Well, the reason why. Said that is yeah. because if it's taking eight to ten hours a day and it's doing that six days a week, it actually might be more efficient. It might be spending time dialing, might be. driving over five counties. His level of peace is great. Yeah. So Sunday, what my, my point was for Sunday, so again, yeah, 400 grand, right? Sunday, he has car problems. Car trouble, 400 grand. Most people stay the fuck home. He Ubered to apartment complexes. He's like, he did a video. He's like, yeah, I Ubered over here and I'm like thinking, 99% of people would stay home that day. Right. And then he goes, took me four bucks on an Uber to get over here. Pretty cheap lead cost. Yeah. Less than the gas I would have spent for the day. And he fucking moved on his day, knocked. Fucking 30 minutes later, picture on social media with an app. $4 Uber charge. No leads. No script. Or hey, go watch him on social. I, I love him. If he sees this and y'all put this out, I love him. He's hard to understand. Strong accent, speaks fast as shit. You know what I mean? Like, like yo, he ain't a pro, but in a different way, he is. He's a beast here. You know what I mean? I'm like, ah, you'll never tell me you can't make 400 Gs. I can't afford leads. Cool, you know how many people are out there? 333.3 .3 million. <laughs> well, I'll love their families. Go find them. You only need 400 people. 400 out of 333.3 .3 million. What percent's that? You know what off the top of your head, bro? <laughs> He's really smart. You know, every, every time I sit with him, I tell him I love him because like, he teaches me new words that I'll never use again in my life. He says these really big words. And, but for me, like, that's the way I went into this thing. It's like, yo, I only need, when I tell you the percentage, it's going to be 0. .000. I wonder how, how many zeros do you think are going to be in, the, in front of the first number? <laughs> to go the percentage of people you need to make 400 grand, 250 grand, 100 grand would be exciting to some people. Nine million, whatever the number is. It's, it's, it's this, like I did an interview yesterday, I had someone call me yesterday and they were like, like over the top about where I'm at in the business. And it was, I don't like it. It was like, settle down. It's like, I'm not blowing smoke up your ass and he kept blowing it up my ass and I'm like, can you stop it? And he starts, we start talking about numbers. Like we did like 209 million last year as a group. Paid volume, which if some of y'all don't understand, that means more than that, 250 million in commissions were paid out to our agents, right? So not a bad year for our group. But he's putting me up here and I'm like, yo, the guy who bought our company, first of all, I'm this big in his group. They did 25 billion. So I'm a rounding error in his world. You know what I mean? Some people are like, 200 million, I'm like, oh, I'm a rounding error to someone <laughs> on their spreadsheet. 
know what I mean? And some of us overcomplicate making 100 grand. I'm like 200 million is a rounding error to some people in the same business you're in. With the same batches of leads and the same underwriting. You know what I mean? It's like, it's everywhere. You just have to believe you can go get it, you know? And I don't think that people, any of y'all, but people in general would have gotten licensed, would have started contracting you if you didn't believe it. But then it's like, there's these funny, like, it's like decisions have to be made along the way. And you all went like, I want to change, cool, I want to do some. Life insurance seems like a way, I believe I can make some money in there, I'm gonna make a decision, go get my license. And then you went and got your license. But then like, belief level starts to slow down when you start calling leads. Belief level starts to slow down when you start doing contracting. Belief level starts to slow down when you issue 13 and wait a while and do more. You know what I mean like there's some belief level changes. Right? So now you have to start looking at yourself and go, why do I believe different than what I believe when I got like you went and got your license, so you didn't believe it didn't work. The numbers say it works. 333 million people. Go hey, Google like how much, I don't know how to word it, but like how much life insurance is sold in a year or something. Come up with something crazy. It's going to be an obnoxious number. But again, just integrity, 25 billion a year. One company. 25 billion a year, one company. You know what I mean? United Healthcare, some of y'all are in health world, right? United Healthcare, their, their numbers are obnoxious how much they sell. It's obnoxious, you know? It's one of the top five industries in the, in the world yeah. to create yeah. money. Correct. And we overcomplicate it with stuff and noise. I'm like, yo, why don't we just go and see a bunch of people? How about that? What do I say? Who gives a shit? I'm Jorge, you need some life insurance? I'm Jorge, you need some life insurance? I could go in and say, I'm Jorge, you need some life insurance? And they would buy from not Jorge. <laughs> and I could use Jorge's script. I like the name. Me too. Jorge. Or, or Gina. Jorge, you need some life insurance. You know? And so it's like, now we have to make decisions every day. Do I, am I going to pick up the phone because I believe I can be successful for my kids and I know, you know what I mean? Like when we get... What slows everybody down is what's here. Yeah. You know, what's crazy is we know that's what slows us down. Because in the moment, it's like you, you'll never convince me you don't know you're doing shit you shouldn't be doing. You never convince me you don't know. But you're reading emails that you're like, they're not really that important. Are you doing dumb shit? <laughs> so what I learned when I knew I was doing it, dumb shit, and I kept doing it, one, that was a decision, right? And then I would be like, I don't really want to do it, but I keep doing it. So and who are you losing to? Man, that was a wake up call to me. I'm like, yo, I'm losing to myself? That's really effing stupid. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'll lose to him. I'm gonna go down and fight. But if I lose to him, what do I do? You know what I mean? Like, I was trying to sell the most of the NFL back in the day, but like, Mark me, I, he beat me. It's Mark, what am I gonna do? He's a beast, you know what I mean? But I was in the conversation. I was number four in the company. That wasn't bad, you know what I'm saying? I got paid, dude. The year before, you know how much I got paid? Almost nothing, because I didn't believe in a lot of it. You know what I'm saying? So like that whole discipline, that thing right there, and if you haven't noticed the red says do more, because I used to just tell people to do, like literally just, literally just do more. Like, don't overthink it. Just make more calls, buy more leads, talk to more people, hold out the sign longer. You can literally just do more shit, you'll get more. I saw, cool, do more of it. Then if you didn't do $6,000, what'd you make, 13, is that you? She's sleeping. If you didn't do that many phone calls, right. maybe you make four grand. Right. Does that make sense? But the thing so just, is, with the 13, I would say eight of that, nine of that, was to form leads. Like, because you did more work. Yeah. That's my point. Yeah. If you didn't do that extra work, you wouldn't have made that. Does that make sense? So it's like, just simply going, here's where I'm at in life. Meaning when I, when I learned, one, I think you guys should, if you don't track your stuff, you should. Yeah. I think they're a fool not to. I think if you if you ran a construction company, you don't make nine million bucks if you don't track your shit. Does that make sense? How much did the house co cost to build? I don't fucking know. 
How many how many laborers are out there? I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, how much did you spend on supplies or windows? I don't I don't have a clue. Would you build them? Well, I know I build them a thousand bucks. Yeah, but how much did it cost you to buy? I don't know. Bad business. Bad business. Right? It's real simple. Yeah. Right? And so, like, how do we not know what we're doing in the business every day? It makes zero sense to me. Yeah. I just, it, I don't know. I was an accountant, and I'm not saying this was the reason. I was an accountant before, so I tracked stuff. But I remember I'm, I'm working on a book on that concept, right? We're almost done with it. And part of the, we're talking about, they're like, well, who taught you to track? I'm like, I don't know. I just thought that's what everybody does, is track shit. When I was little, they were like, little guy, I would buy baseball cards, track them all. Buy the type, whether it was Tops or Fleer or whatever, Don Ross, all the types. And then I would put them in order by numerical order. So on the back of a baseball card, there's a number. One through 752 or how many are in the pack. I'd fucking organize them in order. So I'd make my own box. You could buy a box set. I'm like, nah, I like opening the packs. You open the packs, you go through them. And I'd put them in order and I'd try to build my own box. And then I would take every one of them and I'd look up the pricing value in the Beckett magazine. And I would look at the value of the cards I bought and be like, yo, I bought the cards for three bucks and they're valued at 750. I'm up at 10. At eight, we do a project at school. We build Christmas trees out of coat hangers. And you take two coat hangers and you the little the little hooks on the top, you do them backwards on each other, and they, they make a like an A, like an A-frame. Tape it here on the three sides, and then you make a second A-frame, you interlock them, and it makes the shape of a Christmas tree. Wrap it with garland, wrap it with lights, plug it in, you got a little fucking mini Christmas tree in our coat hanger. It takes three minutes. I can make one today. I used to run around the Neptune Tower cellar. Learned it in class at, uh, I went to Washington Elementary. I don't know if it's still there. <clears throat> Made in our class one day. I'm like, yo, coat hanger, mom's closet, free. Go to the cheap ass store up the street. Mom's got quarters over here, nickels over here, go buy $3 worth of stuff. Knock on the door, sell them 15 bucks. Make 12 bucks. At eight, I knew my cost of a Christmas tree. You know what I mean? I would just, that's who I was. Baseball, 10, 12, 14 years old. I knew all my stats, how many at bats, how many hits, how many steals, how many doubles, how many, at 10, 12, I could write it down on the little pad every day. It just made common sense to me to like track shit. Cause then I could look at it and go, ooh, I only got two doubles this year, I suck. I only hitting this on this, you know what I mean? Just, it made sense to me, sports do it. Imagine them not tracking stats in sports. And it just, who cares? How many yards do you have this year? I don't know. How many touchdowns this year? I don't know. Hey, what's the score? I don't know. Who won? I don't know. We don't track it. Who cares? Why do we track stuff? It'd be stupid. <laughs> like, it would be completely stupid. And then we all run through business and we don't track nothing. I'm like, wait, what? You know what I'm saying? Like, how do you know where you're weak? Yeah. We don't. We blame America. We blame the leads. We blame whatever. That's who we are as people. You know what I'm saying? This is everyone, a lot of people have these problems. So we have to sit back and go like, I'm making a choice not to track my shit. Why? Now, don't think you have to overcomplicate it. Here's how we did it. This was my, again, field sales made it slightly different today. I did this every, every week. I'd go Tuesday, Wednesday, and I'd go eight, Nine, 10, 11, 12, one, two. And I'd always run out of room at the bottom like that. And then I'd put Bob, Steve, Mary. These are the leads, these are the appointments. So I'd fill it in and at the top, every time I made a phone call. Just like that, all day. Dial, 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 five. That's it. Then at the end, I would count it and I'd go 382. And I had a little spreadsheet in there and I put 382. The next all day, I do the same thing. And at the end of the month, I'd look at it, add it all up and go, oh, look how many downs I did. Which, this, this, that was how I track everything. Don't overcomplicate this. You don't need a new CRM to do this. Look, sheet of paper. You don't want to get complicated because it's who you are and it doesn't slow you down much. So I mean, there's some apps now that do it. I know there's some phone systems track your shit for you and they can tell you numbers and things like that. But if you don't do it at all, 
Don't look for complicated. I always joke, use crayons and napkins. Amen? Yeah, amen. Someone told me to like, get as many mortgage counties you can to get too many leads to go back from there. Get ain't mad at you. You can make money with it. But you can know where you're weak. And it's easy as shit. It takes four seconds of that. You know what I'm saying? And the way I built this business. I don't know if I want to get into that piece yet. The way I built the business, I can give like So, even with your very, like you being disappointed at your numbers, I could go, you made 13K, $6,200. You're making, did you know, you make $2.13 every time you dial the phone? Did you know that number? Yeah, I did. Every time you dial the phone, two bucks. Two bucks. Two bucks. Two bucks. Two bucks. Two bucks. You know what I mean? We got waited on last night at the country club. We barely ordered anything because we drank too much water plain. But we ordered two appetizers and our bill at the end was 14 bucks. We were there for an hour and a half. Yeah. If I tipped him 20%, it would have been $3. Yeah. Hour and a half. Mm -hmm. You make two bucks in 30 seconds. And you think you suck. Two bucks, 30 seconds. Two bucks, two bucks, two bucks, two bucks, two bucks, two bucks. Now, can we improve it? Sure. Two bucks every time you call someone. Don't matter if they pick up. Don't matter if they tell you to fuck off. Don't matter if they answer. None of it matters. Your average last month, two bucks every time you made a phone call. Guy last night made three bucks, dealing with me and Kyle for an hour and a half. Now we gave him more than that. But on average, most people would like, you know what I'm saying? That's what they would have taken. Right. They should laugh. You know what I mean? And so for me, I would use stats, dude, to help empower people along the way. And I can do stuff like this with appointments. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if you gave me your appointments. 79, you can do the same thing here. So I go 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, 13, you're not following. Yeah. How, how much money do you want to make this year? I want to make $250. Okay. If y'all open your sheet, you can look. You can do this thing later. I have, I'm skipping around because I'm excited. But there's an actual formal way to do this. Thing. So we might do this later. Okay. But one of these sheets is the math on how I do this stuff. I just do it in my head because it's what I do. Yeah. But the income per activity with goals, right? So watch. This is how easy this fucking business is. Right? 250K. Yep. Okay? Mm -hmm. You saw it. You made $168 per point. Right. So 250K divided by 168. Do that number. You need a calculator on your phone? Yeah. Yep. Right. So divided <laughs> Yep. 1488. Okay. 1488. Uh -huh. Did you know you only have to run 1488 appointments to make 250 grand? Did you know that number? No. Okay. Now do 1488 divided by 52. 28. 28 appointments a week. How many days are you in the field? Divide 28 by 5. Yeah. Divide 28 by 5. You're not listening. 20, 20, divide 28 by 5. 5. 6. 5.7. We'll call it 6. Okay. So if you ran at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11, 12, 1, that's 6 appointments, 5 days a week, 52 weeks in a row, you'd hit 1,400 appointments. And if you stay sucking as bad as you suck today, you make 250, 250. That's how easy the business is for you. Question is, will you do this every single day? Will you do six, five days a week, every every week? That's what I've been doing, and it's still a suck. You haven't done it for a year. Do you care if it sucks if you make 250 grand? Yeah. 
And do you track your numbers to make sure you hit it every single week? Do you do 20 appointments every single week no matter what? Okay, so you're not doing it. Mm -hmm. But most times I am. And then they don't Most times don't count. Yeah. 28 appointments a week no matter what. My name is Jorge. Do you need life insurance? 28 no matter what. That's your goal for the year. Do nothing else. 28 a week no matter what. And I promise you that number will go up. You're focused on all the other shit. You've got to get the word. Your words coming out of your mouth are so negative to yourself. They don't offend me. I don't care. But to yourself, you're super negative. Does that make sense? So whatever belief system is in that you don't believe in yourself, stop it. You've got to figure that piece out. You know what I'm saying? You're worth more to your children. You deserve more. You're a smart girl. You're no dummy. You want things in life. 28 a week no matter what. And then you come to me 12 months from now and be like, I've ran 1,488 appointments, John. Now let's look at your numbers. And then you can tell me you suck. Until then, don't think. No thinking. 28 a week no matter what. Okay, you want to do more? Knock yourself out. That should be your minimum. And just based on really basic fucking math, where you think you suck, would you think you suck if you put 250 grand in your bank? Okay. The numbers are there. You just ain't done enough to earn the end. Where'd you get that 168? So she made 13,000. And I divided by her appointments, which was 79 appointments she ran. Yeah, which is on here. So this is one of the exercises, again, you want to do it. Most of y'all don't need numbers, so you can't do it, right? Ish, but I, if you, I knew who I was. Does that make sense? I thought I sucked too. I thought I was terrible, I thought I was trash. I can share the spreadsheet. I have it still to this day from 2012. The nerdy spreadsheet I built. And it has formulas out the ass because I'm a complete geek. But at first it was just data. Phone calls, appointments, sits. That's it. I don't care about nothing else. Sales, right? That was it. That's all I looked at. And I saw my deposits. That's it. Then one Saturday night, I was bored out of my trees, and I'm staring at all these numbers. And I'm like, what does all this mean? And I just started doing basic division. I, shit I learned in third grade at Washington Elementary. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, so wait, if I ran this, man, uh, Right? And for me, there's, it's funny, $17, the number, 17, changed my entire world, right? I had a different belief system going into it. When I did the math over the course of a year, not a month, to be clear, month numbers suck. At, they don't, averages don't work with little numbers. This is exercise, you could do it next month, this would be 400, it could be fit, you just don't know where. This is not a terrible number though. It isn't, but that's my best, this is my best month ever. It's not, the same bad. Yeah. I've done this for thousands of agents over the years. This elite ones. Yeah. Like when I did Twardowski, his was like 320. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And he was considered like, at the time, this was in 18 or 19. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I used to compare to his, right? And so part of, part of building, where I was telling dude is like, maybe he doesn't track his stuff because it works. Well, I like to track everyone else's and I made it really easy to do it. Because then I could look at someone who was not making a bunch and do this. And then I go, when, when you were killing, how many appointments were you on? Do you remember? Uh, probably average the ballpark of 20 a week. Cool. So a similar thing, right? For me, I was doing 30 a week was my number. 30 a week, 120 a month, 1,500 a year. Right? Am I going into that number, 30 week, 120, 1500. If I, if I only sat with a thousand, so a third no show me, and I only closed 25%, so a thousand, I closed 250 of them, that was my 250 grand. That's how I was gonna get to it. So I went into that year, that was it. 1500 people I'm seeing this year. And I broke it down, right? And I went 30 week, here's my schedule, which is one of these exercises we can build out. Here's my schedule. Here's when I want to work. Here's when I don't want to work. Here's when I have my kids. Here's when I want Sundays. I want to go to church. Thursdays, I get my kids. All these days are open. Every other weekend, I have my kids. And I marked off the count. And then there was left open days. And I took the number, the 120 a month, and I started filling it in. I can run this many this day, this many this day. I mean, I know I had to average 11 a day for the month. It had to be the average. 
So I'm like, all right, cool. Well, this week I can do two days, there's 22. This week I can do four days, there's 44. And I just went at it. I ran 1,500 appointments that year, sat with 1,000, wrote 400 apps, issued 460. I'm like, why? I got fucking better. So this number, instead of 168, went to like 350 for me. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't see it coming because I was just analytical as shit about it. And I tuned out everything else. I didn't care about nothing. Because you've already proven you can do this. Where people get stuck is they're trying to get better at all the other little details. And I'm not saying you shouldn't. And I'm not saying that it, there, for, but for me there was a ranking. And number one was, do this more because it fucking works. <laughs> number two for me was do this more because it fucking works. Number like five or six was like, I'll get better at some stuff. Does that make sense? Now, if I kept getting the same objection over and over again, did I like at 11 p.m. try to watch some things, call for help, go like, hey, dude, I keep getting this, I fucked up, what, do I, what, do, what, do I, what, should, what am I doing wrong here? Yeah, certainly. I, I'm not saying don't do that piece. But too many people do that first. That's number one. Now, building, you don't 20, some people are like, sounds dope. Some people are like, yeah, 20 grand. <laughs> well, I'm just trying to pay my fucking rent. Does that make sense? So I can do things and go, hey, Jorge, 100 a day, 500 a week, 400 grand a year. We figure out how much he makes when he knocks on the door. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just because I can, I can prove the model can work for whoever in any situation, which is why I like to learn a realm of different things. I know how much I made when I knocked on doors. I've done a bunch of them. Was it my favorite thing to do? No. But when I had no money and people didn't answer, I just came up with a rule, you were gonna tell me no twice. Once on the phone, once in person. That was my rule. Yeah, I was focused on no until they tell you your face. Yeah. I like, y'all know that Ryan Sarhan? Yeah. You know that is? Million dollar listener. It's a big real thing you would know. Yeah. There's this real estate show. There's a couple of them. They have like, it's like, it's like the real housewives of whatever for us dudes who like to sell shit. It's kind of what the show is. And so they have a handful of like, really good real estate guys, and they sell like multi-million dollar houses and apartments and shit like that, and they follow them around, whatever. One of the guys I like a lot is Ryan Sarhan, and I follow him on social. And one of his things is, I'm going to follow up with them until they die. That's his rule. Mine was like, once on the phone, once in person. He's like, not till they die. <laughs> like, I wish I met him sooner. <laughs> You know what I mean? And then I started thinking about it. I'm like, it kind of makes sense. And I've done this in every event I've ever done. I'm like, if y'all had to give me a number, right? And what's cool is like, as you start to build, things can change, right? So this, it, some of this stuff isn't like you have to do forever. But if I said, we have the top 10 sales books on the planet, and the authors of them sitting right here, we might have done this on your call, I don't remember. How many, what would be the number, I want you to tell me, what would be the number of times that these elite sales books would say, the number of times we have to contact someone on average to make a sale? It doesn't say that. Then I want a number. The average, the average number of times to make a contact before you make a sale. Yeah, no, the, num the average number of times to contact someone to make a sale, on average. What do you think the books would say? Six. Okay, who else? Twelve. Twelve? Anybody else? Cool. Anybody think outside, more or less? So then for me, I go, that's the average contact for sale. That y'all know and believe. I go, do y'all contact your leads that many times? Most don't even contact. Like, hi, that you just said they don't answer ever, any of them. Contact. Like, hello, Bob? Yes, this is Bob. Speak to them and be told no eight to 12 times. Yeah. So, 2007 free leads over this last year that have, that have not, like, been called up 10 times and they didn't answer. Contact. I know. They say hello. That's a contact. Mm -hmm. Not called, didn't answer. Right. Speak to them, mm -hmm. and they say, no, I'm not buying from you. That's what that number is in those books. So that would be 1464. 
Yeah, spoke to him. So, yeah. yeah. So I spoke to him and they said no. Once. That's true. The average is 8 to 12 is what I'm telling you. Yeah. Contacts to make a sale. Not saying it should be. Right. right? That's sale stuff. And I'm going, huh? Big car salesman. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Meaning I tried to sell them, I presented, they said no. 8 to 12 times. That's true. That's the huge <laughs> now, do I believe that I think that's an overarching sales number? Right. Do I believe that's our case? No. no, I think we're going to be on a different end of the bell curve. Yeah. Right? That's some random average of some sales guy wrote. But y'all said the number. And I'm going, most don't even call their leads, attempt to contact this many times. It's, uh, yeah, you just get more leads. I move them to like, I do three yeah. leads and then three and then three. I usually do nine to 12 and then I let it go. But sometimes. Which makes sense when you're making a fuck ton of money. Right. When you're broke, I don't understand. Because you haven't contacted them. You know what the number is. You believe supposedly that they have a family they want to take care of. You just give up. And you don't do something else. It's not like you're calling other ones. You didn't even want to report your number. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now, if you're fine financially, hey man, I don't care. But if you're unsatisfied with where you're at, and you have people to contact, and you don't have money. Now, do I want you to call the same leads every single day for the next 22 years? No. Right? There's some middle ground. But I'm saying people give up far too soon. They call them once or twice, and they go bad batch, and they move on. I'm like, the combination, not only do I not believe in the bad batch, not only do I not believe you should be told no more than once, right? The attempts aren't there. Then when you layer those combinations, dude, the percentage of you closing people goes down and down and down and down and down. You know what I'm saying? We're just looking at one thing causes the problem. You stack three, four, or five different things on top of it, it's like, Profitability's messed up, you know what I mean? Now, do I believe I can I should buy more new leads every week? Yes. My style was, yo, let me buy enough new leads, eventually became, let me buy enough new, new leads off the week. I booked 30 easy appointments a week and I give the other ones to other agents. Why? Because they have the time. I had the money. When I didn't have the money and I had the time, I did all the shit I'm talking about. And so as you're, some of this gets into building too, maybe you're at a different level, you're making a bunch of money, whatever it is, but like, not everybody you're gonna work with has money. Not everybody you work with can do this stuff, but they can all go, my name's Jorge, you need some life insurance? They can all make 6,000 phone calls and make 168 bucks a, a, a deal. You know what I mean? And to some people that's here. And I've helped people make millions of dollars with simple shit like this, you know? Because it's, it's start again. Belief level, decisions, execution on stuff. You know, and for me, we just run deep with this really simple mentality of easy stuff. I did the numbers, you know, for me, we made it really simple for people to track stuff because I just took what I did and every week they'd just text a little number and Amanda would put it in a spreadsheet and I'd nerd out. I didn't make them nerd out. If you're that and you want to do it, knock yourself out. But I wouldn't do it before you're doing a shit ton of activity because it means nothing. You know what I mean? If you don't have a lot of data, what's you're staring at stuff for no reason, you know? So, I was like, how can I make this a different game and remove emotion? You know what I'm saying? You did it. Hey, did you keep doing it? I know you texted me right after, like, you had some oh, success. Yeah. 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 Picked up some apps. Yeah. Okay. What'd you do different? If you have, like, rough contacts, leads, call more, call ones you didn't want to call, like, what? What I did is I ended up reprinting leads to that purchase over the past two years. Yeah. And the ones I told them. Sold some. Yeah, I actually sold five apps from that. Five apps from leads, your ads are sitting around. Yeah. Why did you not call them? You just gave up on them, like everybody. Yeah, I mean, all that. Make sure you say just gave up on them. I mean, you know, you just got to conform sometimes to the environment. Yeah. And so just mentally, a lot. after the conversation that we had, that's what, what the hell this show Yeah, it worked. It worked. Yeah, that's going to really be my. What's cool is because I made that shit up that day. I had no idea if it was. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Just really taking that approach. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's great. How much money did you make on that? Uh, it's five apps. Um, close to like, yeah, roughly, like close to four grand. Four Gs. Yeah. 
You know, his old age, like yeah. two of the leads are like two years old. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Nice. But what's that make you think now? Um, no limits, really. I'm really eager to do it. I don't bother you. So good. I was like, where is she? <laughs> Go ahead. That's a different mental concept, bro. Like, um, as you guys were discussing, no bad bats. I mean, I get it, the bad streak and all that, but I just look at it all the same. Yeah. And now I'm just really even more um, confirmation or more endorsement of understanding like these people with families. Yeah. And they feel like a four four. You know, so, yeah. So you know what? I love it, dude. You know what hit me too was like, man, when I did that. So all this stuff I teach is just stuff I'm done to get myself out of the hole, right? And then for me, I'm like, let's let's make it to where that's not your business model forever, because that would be a really shitty business model for the rest of the time, okay. in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's like, all right, four G's now. We don't talk every day, right? right. So it's like. What do we do with the four Gs? Do we catch up bills? Do we catch, you know what I mean? Like now we got more belief, decisions, execution to make, right? So now we make the four Gs. Now what's the choices? We can spend it, right? We can save it. And then if you go spend it, now we can spend it over here. We can spend it over here. My motto is, you know, take four Gs. If you know what you spent to get the four Gs for you, it was just free essentially because you spent it years ago, whatever, right now, do I take the four G's and put it in a way where I get out of the situation I'm in currently? So for me, I'm going, all right, if I put four G's or half of it into leads and work them like I wished I worked the ones I just called and got five out of, because I can't help but think, how many would you got out of it had you had a different mentality and approach along the way? Hundreds of apps. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you could have a couple hundred grand in the bank if you had, if for the last, 104 weeks yeah. worked them the right way with the right mentality, right. but neither here nor there. That's a motivator, motivating factor for me now. You can't like uh, dwell on, right. right? But we use it for me to motivate myself to not get myself in that situation again. Right. All right. So now we're like, all right, cool, how? But are you? Where do you take that four G's? Catch up bills, credit card payments, pay the ads, do whatever, blah 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 blah, and go like, oh shit, I got no money again. Oh, I gotta call those leads again. Shit. <laughs> That's where I'm at right now. We just got caught up on everything. I don't even see it. If my wife had an access to the account, she just moves money. I'm like, why'd you do that? You know what I mean? And I'm like, oh, right? Yes, yeah. so <laughs> deflating. Fine. This is not a forever plan. Right. Yeah. Right? So now the question is all right, less, how quick can we get paid in this deal? Like, how quick can you make that four grand? Like, you, did you get paid on a, a decent amount of it already? Or do you write like long term stuff? Uh, well, some of it is that last portion of the check. Yep, cool. We make money pretty quick. Yeah. So for me, now we got decisions to make. All right, how much of that 4Gs do I put right back in to make in the next? Y'all tell me, how quick can I get paid on? If I put, if I put heavy amount in, how quick can I make money? 20 hours a week, the next day, maybe? Yeah. 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 So right? So, so then I go, all right. It's eight up third. If grinding shit yeah, got me four Gs, <laughs> yeah. what can grinding, what can I make, how quick and how much can I make now? Okay? Imagine you just flip it once, four to eight. And you only double. Four to eight. Now you got eight. Now what can you do? Pay all the stuff you paid with the four? And you got four left. Yeah. Now you're out of the wheel forever. One shot. One time you sacrifice, you suck it up, you have another bad week, who gives a shit? You've had plenty of those. What's one one or two more? And you go all in. What's stopping people? Well, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, ah. But if I was like, yo, give me four, I'll bring you eight in three days. That's how it works. But again, we get stuck on the belief. You know what I mean? Yeah. So is it now, the question is, is it belief in the leads? We're probably going to tell us our, ourselves it is. Ah, the badge. Ah, you know what I mean? But I'm going, ah, 
that is belief in you. You know what I mean? Do you believe you're willing to execute on it? Do you believe you're willing to put in the work on it? Well, you have a history of not, right? So now we got to learn to change that shit. That's, that's the real core of the problem here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Again, you made four G's on calling what everyone else would call shit. Hell, you called it shit till you and I had a 20 minute conversation. You know what I'm saying? Imagine the work we could do over months or years. You know what I'm saying? And then you start, you start talking to multiple people. He's trying to bring people in. You know what I mean? Like, we got some started, they left. Got some started, they left. All right, what if we get them started? We start to have the right conversations with people. Keep it really simple. Like, yeah, here's the plan. What about, ah, like squashing the contracting thing? It took me eight seconds. Why? You know how many times I've dealt with that in my career? I can squash it like that. It's like, I'm going to think about it. Okay. Stop. Do this. I just make it really simple, really easy. No big deal. Just do this. Right? And then I back it with stories because I did it. You know what I mean? America, our leads were like, they looked literally just like this. This, is the, this was a lead to me in 2014. Names over here, address, whatever they filled out. Like they filled something out, but we didn't get the something they filled out. I got the data of what they filled out. That's what, that, I wrote 175 grand my first year on that. Data. Just showing up. Knocked a lot of doors, called them. I'd show up to the house and be like, hey, so you filled out a lead. And a lot of people would hesitate, be like, I don't have a lead to show them when I get in. What do I give them? I'm like, yeah, I just pointed to the sheet of paper that they never looked at. I was like, hey man, I'm here for the insurance. You put the foot out, kitchen table. Where, where most people around me in my circle that were getting started at the time we were a new company, we didn't have all the stuff worked out. And this is what we got. They wanted, I can't say this is your signature, sir. I can't point to it on the piece of paper. And they didn't have the writing on the, their phone number written down. I just, I can't, I can't I, how do you go into their house without it? Like, don't give a shit. <laughs> Family, kids, you know what I mean? Like different belief level going in. And I believe I can walk in with it. Like, I'm, I'm funny. You ever like, have, uh, you ever heard that thing like, it's like, kind of like, act like you should be there, and it'll, yeah. so like, <laughs> I always do it, but I mess with my wife a lot. I mess with a lot of people a lot. And so when we go to these baseball tournaments that Maddox has, any of you have kids that play baseball? Yeah. What age? What age? Her. So they're older now. Yeah. You play like tournament baseball? Oh. Um, like where they go and play tournaments at yes. different parks? Yeah. I don't know how it was, that, but now we're new to it. So we used to just play rec ball and you show up and you park and you play baseball and you get in your car and you leave. Tournament ball and you show up and you park and they got like a 16 year old kid there with wristbands like you're getting into a club and they make you pay five or 10 bucks to go watch your kid play. For the tournament you already paid for. Yep. For the team you already paid for. So you pay for the team, you pay for the uniform, you pay for the tournament, and then you pay to watch the tournament that you paid off for already. So I can't help but prove that I can get in without them asking me to pay. Now I'll always pay, but I can't help it. So every time I have the cart, so we go in, we unload the fucking truck, and we have the cart, you open up and you put the water in, you plan like you're gonna be there for 27 weeks and they lose once and you go home. So you pack all the crap up in the chairs and I pull this little buggy in and I walk in and every time ticket guys right there, I just walk in like this, like I was already there 22 times and I already have my ticket and I'm supposed to be there 100% of the time I get through. Okay. Now Steph's always right behind me. Yeah, she and so she stops and pays. But I just go in there like I'm a coach with the kid that because the coaches and kids don't have to pay. So I just walk in like I don't have to pay. Not once does anyone stop me ever. I get in every single time. When I was when I was took my daughter, she did Ohio State. And uh, we go up there to do a tour, a formal tour to the college. This is not, might sound weird to some people, especially those that don't, don't know me. I don't really like people, like really at all, especially ones I don't know. And if we weren't in this environment, if you saw me somewhere else, you wouldn't see me speak. I wouldn't talk. I'd be the quietest one for sure. So when you go on a tour, what do you do the tour with? A bunch of fucking strangers. And they put you on a bus with all these people you don't know. And I don't wanna do that shit. So I tell Shaylee, I'm like, yo, we're going on our own tour. She's like, you can't get in the buildings. Watch me. 
We toured fucking Ohio State without the tour guide. You see someone, you're like, what dorm room do you want? The dorms are over there. She's like, you can't get in. I'm like, watch me. So we can start walking over there. And I just wait. You see a student coming out. And as they start walking towards the door, I start walking towards the door. So I meet them while they're opening the door. They open the door. I'm like, thank you. They hold the door open for me. I walk in the fucking door room. And we tour the damn door. Go in the science building. Same way. You need a key card. No, you just wait till someone walks out and you walk in like you're supposed to be there. We literally toured Ohio State without the tour thing. And at the end, she was like, at the beginning, she was like, ah. at the end, she was like, this is the best thing ever, Dad. Now, do I advise it? No. But can you show up to leads with the same approach and the mentality? I mean, if you go into it timid, people notice. There's like a feel. There's an energy to things. You know what I'm saying? And so I, I pay attention to that stuff as my approach, not only on the phone, but in person. You know, so for me, the feel was when I had these on a sheet of paper, I'm like, fuck it, who cares? Going like I'm supposed to be here. Going like they did fill out a thing. You think they remember? Show me the one that I hand wrote on March 5th, 2022. I'd like to see that one. Oh, is that what mailers do though? Don't they have their handwriting? Yes. Yeah. But I didn't give a shit. And that lead we didn't have available to us. And I had no money. And I had lots of time. And everyone else was sitting around sulking how broke they were. And I did it too. And someone thankfully was like, you idiot, what are you doing? January of 2014, so literally 10 years ago, a couple months ago, I made 800 bucks a month. 10 years ago, made 800 bucks, nearly quit. And that dude called me and be like, yeah, what are you doing? You idiot. He didn't say that. I heard it that way. Anyway, he's like, you know, we're doing it. We work at the same company with the same leads and the same one carrier. Yeah, but this carrier, this company over here, they have American Amicable, and they have Transamerica, and they have AIG, and blah, 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 blah. He's like, yo, I made fucking 22 grand this one. Do you want to make money or not? Yeah. What are you willing to do? Anything came out of my mouth. He was like, all right. Leads on the spreadsheet. Go see. Like, all right. 175 jigs. Like, shit. Guess it works. You know what I mean? But in my head, I was like, a ratio, blows, I only contact whatever percentage, right? What I was saying earlier, the $17 thing, this all ties in. When I looked at the data I was tracking, I looked at a long, a big 12 months of activity. I made, it was 58,000 and some change. I made three, over the year, 3,300 and something phone calls, okay. which you did in a month, right. in two weeks, Yeah, <laughs> to be clear. Mm -hmm. Something's different with, we're, we'll figure out, I want to know your contact rate, because no, right. something's off, yeah. which is an easy fix. Mm -hmm. If I knew how many you contact versus how many you booked, there's something there. Yeah. And I want you to send me some reported mm -hmm. conversation. Like you try to book appointments. Okay. Do you do one call close or book or yeah, home? Call close typically. Yeah. Send send me a couple that like tell you to fuck off basically. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I go through and I look, and I think I'm terrible. I'm about to quit the industry. January 2014, make 800 bucks. I look at my thing, 17 bucks a phone call. But I only made 58 grand, and I spent 20 on leads, so I only netted 30. And da 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 da. And I'm broke, and I have no money in my bank account, and all this stuff. That's all I'm thinking. The math was 17 bucks. I was like, what the fuck? Now, y'all compare to two. Be real, super low. Mine got up to like fucking 80 bucks phone call. Like, he got high. Yeah. What? What I just said, the 17? It was all, I was doing, so for me, I was doing all leads because I was trying to teach this thing. Yeah. That just, that was my all in number. I just looked at, I look at deposits, activity. I don't look at nothing in the middle. The noise in the middle is what messes everyone up. Is it just dials, pickups, and sales? Would you recommend just starting, you know, just... Dials, pick, contacts, appointments. I don't do appointments. I, I, you do appointments. What's that? You do, you do some type of appointment. You wouldn't sell insurance. Well, I'll, I'll do it right then and there. It's a presentation. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would say more presentations. Yeah. Well, sometimes I'll book an yeah. appointment. You know what I mean? I'm not against it, but majority of my... For me, it would be an appointment if they, like, get past... If you get to sort of maybe present. Yeah. But then I would have a presentation goal, too. 
Like, because I said, hey, do you have a few masks? This is, uh, and, I, and they hang up on me in three minutes to me, that I need a presentation. Right. But maybe it's an appointment because they said yes to like, talk a little longer. I don't know your script, but usually it's like this, like, can I get them on the phone a little longer right. approach? So there's some, I would define what an appointment is to you, and I would define what a presentation is to you. Does that make sense? Would be like the full pitch. You yeah, know, I basically so you should get the price. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Right. If that were me, right. That's where some people are like, I presented 82 this week and I wrote one app. And I'm like, what do you consider a presentation? Well, if they answer, I'm like, stop. Yeah. Like, stop. You know what I mean? Like, don't do feel good numbers. I just wanted, to, I just wanted data, dude. I wanted unemotional data. Y'all did, y'all seen that uh, Moneyball? Yeah. Well, it's, it's a movie. That's it, dude. Yeah. Just give me unemotional data. If you haven't seen it, watch it. It's literally a pro baseball team. They looked at building a team based on data, not on what traditional scouting did, which was how big his muscles are, how fast he runs. None of that shit matters when you look at data. You know, or it doesn't matter near as much as people thought it did. I won't say it don't matter at all. But, you know, so for me, when I learned that number, I'm like, like, do you get mad on the phone ever still? I yeah. Like when people are negative? Sometimes, not most of the time. I was like, seventeen bucks, bro. I'll sit here right next to you in church and call you twenty-two times in a row for seventeen bucks. What are you gonna yell at me in church? I didn't care. You know what I mean? It just changed everything for me. And then I look again. I am pretty analytical, but you don't necessarily have to be super. For me, it was just like, can I know basic level stuff, you know? And if you don't believe in it for yourself, for me, it was enough to go like, the overarching business, there's so much in here, sold. I just need a piece. I just need a piece, you know? And so what I would say probably, what time is it? Hey, when's stuff coming in? When should I shut up? Well, cool. So, for me, one of the things that I probably learned the, that helped me the most, like there's, there's this judgment thing we do. Judge leads, judge and underwriting, judge and results. So my, you know what I mean? We're like, we have this like judgment on typically some result driven thing is where people get frustrated or they look at heavily like we all, we know the negative side of things. And I had to, I had to change this mentality where I wanted to judge my personal activity the way I judge the results. I stopped judging the results. I wanted to be as mad that I didn't dial or run the 28 appointment, whatever, whatever criteria I knew I had to do, I wanted to be pissed at myself when I didn't buy leads on time, when I didn't take the four G's and put it into leads, when I didn't just go call people, when I didn't get on the phone with whatever, when I, you know what I mean? Like whatever the activity things I was doing. Cause again, I'm built and one of the things we'll do today is kind of build out a, a, a schedule. But when I knew what activity I had to do, I wanted to be as mad at myself that I didn't perform the activity as I was when someone canceled a policy as I was when someone told me to F off, as I was when the lead had Mickey Mouse at gmail.com on it. I wanted to be mad at the activity side. I wanted that to irk the shit out of me like the results did. Does that make sense? Because I started looking at it, right? And I came up with, for me, and I come from literally nothing. Two, one dude in the room now, two dudes in the room nowhere from. Like literally nowhere in front. Like it's the worst places on the planet. But where I grew up, he bought nothing. You know, I had my first kid on the way, sixteen. I was living on government stuff till I was like twenty-two. They paid for everything. Hell, longer than that because they paid for my school through like twenty-eight for a decent amount of it. Um, so I had to work a lot, but I didn't make any money. <laughs> So I had like blue collar jobs, restaurant jobs. I just did shit work. So eventually I got into accounting, which was funny enough, paid less than blue collar work. 
I thought it was cooler and I got to wear khakis, which I hated, but I made no money. Um, and when I looked at this and I kept being very judgmental about my result because I was frustrated by it, I don't know why, but like I started putting like math to activity because I, I wanted to like, I wanted to look at this thing like, think how attorneys bill when they're working on your case and they start some type of timer or like you ever seen chess? That's when I was watching some videos the other day. We never see two people play chess and they hit the little fucking timer. I don't really know how, I know how to play chess, but I don't know how like real chess works. I don't know what the timer does or how many, I don't know how many minutes, I don't know how that works, but I know the timer stops. And it's like, I play online with my son and he'll mess with me, right? And he, I assume the button is the same way, but we play this little phone one every once in a blue moon. He went through this stage where he wanted to play it every day for like two weeks. And we'd get in this chess game and I didn't find out till after the timer thing and he would move like quick and I'm trying to do strategy. And I know chess enough to kind of know what each player does, but I can't like see it instant. Like these fuckers just move without, you think no thought. They just know it so well. So he'd move someone, I'd be like, how do you move there? If I move my queen over here, I can do the rook like this and I can, I'm planning out things. And then all of a sudden one, one, one game, it's like the game just ends. And it's like Maddox wins. I'm like, what the hell? He's like, timer dad he was just moving quick I was moving slow the timer got me. I'm like no oh, motherfucker he just had a better strategy his strategy wasn't to check me his strategy was move quick I move slow he's gonna get me in my weakness I'm like sneaky little shit now that stopped and then I started trying to race him and I'm just moving people well he actually knows the game too so I start moving fast and he's like check me I'm like mother effer <laughs> you know, strategy and so I started thinking about things like that started thinking about my jobs. I had a warehouse job where I was tracked, very similar, to where I had to load boxes. And this is what I talk about on the Jorge thing because he's a trucker guy. I had to load boxes on pallets, wrap them, put them in a truck to be unloaded at Applebee's and whatever, and all the steakhouse and shit like that. And when we got an order, it was those old school printer paper with the little circles on the side. I don't know what that stuff's called anymore. And it had stickers on it. Yeah, and it had stickers. And the stickers were the orders, and I had to take a sticker off, put it on the meat, put it on, so they knew, like, what stop, what ride. Right. There was all kinds of data on the sticker. Anyway, on the big order, there was a number on the top. I had to type the number in the computer, and it'd be like, you got 12 minutes and 32 seconds to fill this order. So I hit enter, timer starts. You go up and down the aisles, you pack the shit, you wrap it up, you put it in, you at the end, you type in the next one, timer stops on the next one, starts on the new one. And it gives you a score. You finished in 82%, you finished at 120%, meaning it took 10 minutes and I finished in seven, you're 70%, or you're 130% or whatever it would be. And if I took 13 minutes, it's like you're 70%, meaning you suck, you took too long. And I was tracked. And our supervisors used to get onto us <clears throat> if we didn't meet criteria. And if you didn't have a certain score over the period of time, you get written up, you get written up, you get fired. Same thing, I had a job in a call center, AT&T, inbound call center for like, if you call them bitch about your bill, I was the dude who was like, thank you, call at and I can help you. And I did that, both of these were night shift jobs. And I call in and there was a timer on my screen with how much, because you could, you could push a button and not take calls. But the timer on the screen tracked not only how long you were available, but how long of the availability you were taking calls, right? And they, they changed how many people were in based on call flow. So if it was slow, you go home, whatever. So at the end of the thing, you had to be on the phone 90% of the eight hours. If you weren't, they, were, they knew why. The whole computer tracked it. So I get into this and I start looking at it and I'm like, how can I come up with that same model here? Because I'm having a hard time holding myself accountable. That's a thing for a lot of people on here. I'm like, I have to come up with something to like keep myself accountable. How do I get to 40 hours? And I just started looking at everything that we do to make money. To me, I broke it down. Phone calls, presentations, right? Because if they ain't there, don't take no time. You didn't do anything. So phone calls, presentations, recruiting, calls. Those are the three big things that I wanted to track. And those are what I believe are the really only three, three, three things you directly make money on. Some people are like, if you don't have leads, you can't do it. I'm like, Jorge does you know, it. For me, those are the three things that I was gonna track for myself, right? So I'll give you mine. You can do yours later, now, if you want. I don't care. Take the concept, make it work for you. 
what I learned is, and if we had really good numbers, I would do it in here, but there's not a ton. But for me, I'm trying to think, when I first, the first time I met Mark, 2015, how long you know him? Since about 2018. Whew, so you met some raw Mark. Mark's evolved a lot since then. <laughs> He's one of my favorite people on earth. <clears throat> um, I met him in 2015, and he starts talking to me about numbers and activity. Can you, can you make it like really cold in here? Because I'm dying. <laughs> I'm like sweating. Are you hot? Are you cold? Crazy. Are you? <laughs> Sorry. Are you dying? Are you freezing too? Amanda Bennett? I'm good. Uh, hey, can, can you bring me a fan? <laughs> There's a fan. Uh, can you bring it to yeah. me? Hell yeah. I'm like on fire. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm always hot. Right now, I'm really hot. So I start looking at stuff, right? Um, and when I meet Mark for the first time, I'm trying to figure out crazy enough. Again, 175 grand I did in 2014, which comes to like, it's like 14, 12, 14 G's a month, whatever the number was. Issue paid, not deposits. I'm, I'm, I made like, I cracked 100 grand, I made like 110, and I netted like 80 or 90 after meets. But I issued, and back end money came in 15, right? But I issued 175 that year. And I'm trying to figure out my one, my question to Mark, I'll never forget, dude. I was like, bro, I can't figure out how to get to 20 grand. I'm at 14, I can't figure it out, bro. Said you're not working enough? Bro, <laughs> he didn't have to. <laughs> So, I'm like, what leads, what area, what product, what carrier? I'm asking them all the stuff y'all are wondering. How to, I'm, I'm doing it to Mark Mead. And if y'all don't know, anybody else know Mark? Like, have you ever like heard him train or speak? Like, he's a machine. But he's no nonsense at all. And he will run through both brick walls to do work for his family. I, I've never seen anyone like him. This is a mentality. And uh, I hate that thing. <laughs> hey, Amanda, you need like a giant here are the, here are the paper towel sign. <laughs> but he's still off in training. You should. <laughs> Did they take a shower? <laughs> Those paper towels. Hopefully they're in there. If not, we'll put some in. It is. It makes me. Amanda's gonna go make them. If you if you look at the bacteria towel, it actually it is way worse. Like you might as well not wash your hands if you're gonna dry. I just love those things because it it blows all of the bacteria everywhere. It makes it like ten times worse. So just. Paper towels. <laughs> anyway, moving on. The gate's so, point of your I'm talking to Mark, right? And I'm trying to overcomplicate. Now I know, overcomplicate, get into the next level. And I'm writing 14 a month. And I can't figure out how to add six more. That's where I was at in business. So he starts asking me how many points, because he, and he does right before, immediately prior to my question to him. He literally walked off stage and asked him a question. He did a 30 minute presentation on leads and appointments. It's all about leads and appointments, leads and appointments, leads and appointments, leads and appointments. This is 30 minutes, that's all I heard. That's all everyone heard, leads and appointments. He said 86 times. And there was all kinds of good stuff in the middle that I can't regurgitate because I don't speak like that. 30 minutes, leads and appointments. I get off and I start asking him about everything but leads and appointments. And he's like, gave me that mark look like I saw you watching me speak, bro. <laughs> you know, he's like, leads and appointments, dude. And I go, yeah, but what time do you call them? And what does the weather have to be when you call them? And do you call them at dinner or breakfast? Like, you know what I mean? I'm like overanalyzing all the shit. He told me he'll sit down at dinner table if you knock on the door and you open the door. Yeah. Oh, dude, you know. He expects them to have a place set one. <laughs> I said, I'm not on the back doors and you probably want to be aware of something. I probably have more appointments and you know, appointments and you know, build than I did. Yeah. Dialing. Yeah, I'm going to go. 
they all, yeah, it all works. It's just work at the end of the day, you know? It's like, so anyway, he's asking me all the questions. Finally, he goes, do you know how many appointments you're running? Now, he doesn't know me at all to see. He doesn't know I'm analytical and have all the numbers. So I have fucking every stack. He didn't know that. And I'm like, he's like, how many appointments are you running? I was like, 42. I'm off. And for the two people that have seen Mark speak, you've heard him laugh. He did that to my face. When I said 42. Okay. And I'm like, I, I great, but I know you were not satisfied with that number. Now I didn't understand why. I'm still trying to talk about the fucking weather. And he's like, 40, like, cute. Yeah. You know? And I'm like, huh. All right. Well, thanks. And we exchange numbers. And it takes me two days to go, well, how many do you run, bro? I didn't think of that on the spot. I was too slow. This is Mark Mead. Killer at the time. Top producer. I think he did 650 grand that year, whatever the number was. He texted me back and he said 90. That's what his text looked like. And I was like, all right, so that don't line up. I understand the laugh a little more now. You know what I mean? And I'm like, all right, this dude's, and he's really good at sales. I'm really bad at sales. And he's doing it here. I'm like, yeah, I can't, I definitely can't do it with this level. I know I can't even do it at his level. So I start looking at it and then one day I'm go, and so I'm running 42 appointments a week. Now his laugh, I start looking at my spreadsheet. I start nerding out. I'm making something like 350 phone calls a month or something at the time. Like some, yeah, dude, it was pathetic. It was really bad. I door knocked a lot to get appointments. Um, I door knock, things like that, whatever. You know, I looked that back and I was halfway decent at booking appointments. I didn't know it. But if I look at stats, I can look at it now and go, holy shit, that was not half bad. Right? So I'm doing 300 something, about oh, 350 dials, whatever the number was. And I was recruiting from the beginning. Like I did, I always wanted to build. I was talking to probably a handful of people a week. You know, so it's all like five recruiting dials. And so one day, I'm staring at my nerdy spreadsheet and I ask myself the question, I ask you, how long do those really take? That's what I did. So I said, cool, one minute. So I was like, how long is that if the chest timer or the warehouse timer or the call center timer were on me, All right? So I'm like 60, 120, 240, 300, right? So that's six hours. So like one minute, if I tracked it, six hours. That's for the month. Two words, six hours, that's one month. This is a month. Yeah. Right, so 42, right? I'm like, I don't sit all of them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Sitting like, I don't know, 30 of those maybe. I'm lucky, right? I'm like, hour about, right? Presentation, hour ish, average. Some are fucking six minutes and I got kicked out. <laughs> Some are hour and a half because I squat and beg them after they tell me they want to think about it. I'm like, hour. So I'm like, all right. Again, 30 I sit. So I'm like, 30 hours. Handful of recruits. Interviews like, 10, 15 minutes. You know what I mean? I'm like, long one, 20. Okay, that's a couple hours. I'm like, cool, 36, 38 hours. For the month? Yeah, bro. You know what They didn't let me when I worked at the warehouse. Right. I still had to work 40 when I got there. They didn't let me when I worked in Alpharetta commute an hour and a half to go be an accountant for 40 grand a year. If you were driving 5,000 miles a month, you wouldn't have any of that driving time. I mean, if you're printing money, I was broke. So now I wouldn't. For me, you do you. I'm, this is for me. 
I'm telling you what I did for me. No, I wouldn't. Because I, I, in my life, I have to drive to work. Does that make sense? Every job my entire life, I had to drive to. I've driven hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of miles to work, for work, delivering pizzas, doing all the stuff. I've never got paid to drive. Jorge got paid 28 cents a mile to drive a truck. He could probably count it. I don't know. I've never been paid to drive. So for me, I didn't count. Now, where would it count? If I did an interview in the car and I just so happened to be driving, sure. But I'm counting this, not the drive. I personally don't count the drive. I just don't. You know what I mean? It's like, again, other than truck drivers, I don't know anybody paid to physically make taxi, Uber. I don't know. I, it's not my world, dude. You know, I've commuted my whole life and never got paid a penny for it. And still had to do 40 hours when I got there. You know what I mean? Again, I was telling, we were talking earlier, he's coming, up and coming, which to me is somewhere near Alpharetta. I don't know how close, but they seem like they're in the ballpark. I was in Dallas, Pauling County, which was really Villa Rica, according to Amanda. And I think the Douglasville post office delivered to my house. I don't really know. So it was 45 minutes that way. I think it's that way. And Alpharetta's, it was 50 plus miles to Alpharetta. So like, we have 285 here, and you have 75 and 400s over there. And 20s over here, I lived over here in Baldwin County. So I had to go I-20, 285, 400, Alpharetta. Took me an hour and a half every day. 5.30 in the morning, I had to leave to get there by seven. I leave at four. This does not take an hour and a half anymore. Took me two plus. I did it every day for four years. They eventually moved to Roswell, which is over here, and I got to be a touch short. Every day, four years. When I got there, still had to put in 40 hours. So I'm like, how? how do I get to 40 hours a week now? I'm not doing 40 a month. If I count the things that the call center would have counted. Again, their timer wasn't on when I was driving there. Their timer wasn't on when I was studying things. Their timer wasn't on when I was going to night school to get better, to get a raise. Their timer wasn't on except when I was doing the work. So I'm like, what if I go at this that way? What would that look like for me? Right? So I was like, I'm, I know we just did monthly. So for me, weekly, I was like, if, what if I do 600 phone calls? That's 10 hours. Right? One a minute, 60, 10 hours. Right? If I book 30, this is in home days, very different than telesales. 20 presentations, I reach 20 hours. Would you say that in home or are we going to see here? They're different. Yeah. Um, I'll answer it in a minute. I'll give you my opinion. <clears throat> Recruiting, so if I do 30 a week and they're 20 minutes each, I can do three an hour, 10 hours. That was going to be my way to 40 hours a week. Y'all do whatever the hell you want. I don't care. That, after that conversation with Mark, this is all I changed. It was the same person. February 2015, I issued 12 grand. Convention, <clears throat> our annual convention. I don't know. Who, I don't know if everybody works here. Most, most do. Not all do. There's a couple people that. <clears throat> February every year, February 2015, first convention. I issue like eight grand in January, like 12 grand in February. I leave convention, overanalyze stuff, start looking at numbers, come up with, you know, here's a game plan. I already kind of look at how much I'm making per dial, per appointment. I sort of know those numbers. I did them earlier. I'm like, 40 hours, nothing else matters to me. What about training? Still have to do it. What about asking for help? Still have to do it. What about driving? Still have to do it. What about convention? Still have to do it. What about studying underwriting? Still have to do it. You know what I mean? Again, counting job, had to commute to it, had to go to night school. They didn't give a shit. I got to do that on my own. So all the stuff, the study, to get better at my career, that was, that was extra. 
You know what I mean? Driving, call it overtime, call it what you want. I don't care. You know what I mean? This is me. what I did for me. It worked for me. If you got something works for you, teach something else. I don't, who cares? <laughs> you know what I mean? This was my path. So I started doing this. Four hundred sixty-eight k. Really, only started this in March, twenty fifteen. Twenty fifteen, I ended at four hundred sixty-eight k. One thing. This is the first when you said that. Yeah, I did. I changed one thing. Forty hours a week in three years. That's it. Belief level certainly changed. Made the decision to do it. But I executed this. There were no new carriers. There was no new leads. There was no new products. There was no new trainings. I had no new upline. Nothing. It was all the same shit. So is that 600 leads or 600 Phone calls? That was phone calls for me. Yeah. I could book 30 appointments for 600 phone calls. Now, I was taking money and putting into leads. I wasn't calling fucking three-year-old leads 8,000 times. Right. You know what I mean? Because I made the decision that when I did it once, I hated it. I was done. I didn't want to bring the sheet of paper anymore. Because Mark wasn't called. Mark wasn't doing this shit. Mark's like, yo, invest. You know what I mean? Some people want to put a yard sign out or hire a guy to flip a sign. Some people put ads on the soup during the Super Bowl. Pick your poison. Yard flipper, cheap as shit. But is it? Super Bowl, I don't know, seven and a half million bucks for 30, whatever the number is. Five million bucks for 30, I don't, whatever the number is. You know what I'm saying? Revenue. Sign flipper. 10 bucks an hour. Revenue. Eh. Who are you? Time or money. You know what I mean? But I understood how quick I could make the money. I didn't need to build up 5.2 mil or whatever. I think I saw Bet David meant, quote, 5.2 million for a Super Bowl ad the other day. I didn't, I didn't, I don't have to do that here. Thousand bucks. I didn't buy, buy enough leads to make 600 phone calls and book 30 appointments all day long from 27,000 different lead vendors. That, that shit's easy. <laughs> it was the belief that I could do it and the execution of it that was what was hard. And I didn't want to run that hamster wheel anymore. That sucked. And I've been in the business at this point almost two years. Two, actually, I was early 2015. I was in two and a half years at this point. So I started August of 2012. This is February of 2015. Two and a half years in. Dude, I'd seen enough people come and go. I'd seen enough people play that. I was playing somewhat of a hamster. Again, I, for me, I was making more money than I ever made on an accounting job. So I was doing okay. We weren't killing it. I couldn't buy my kids new shit, but like my bills were paid. My little baby bills, you know? Again, you make 30, 40 grand your whole life, and then you make 80. Well, there's more money there, but it went fast because you buy two things and pay off some credit cards, it's gone. You know, so we weren't killing it by any means, but I was never like, I was never the guy that was like, I don't know how to buy $5 in leads this week. You know what I mean? I, I just, as soon as I got any insurance, I made one. I wasn't, again, not like gobs of it, but there was always something around. And I was consistent, you know? I think where I did well was, that was easy to me because I, again, I was 35 when I, this, I was 37 in 2015, about to be, 38. It was almost 38. Consistent was easy. Shit, I've been working my whole life for someone else. If I wasn't consistent, I got fired. You know what I mean? So I'm like, that's all I have to do? Wait, I just have to do the same shit I've been doing my whole life? That's it? Yeah. That's what Mark's laugh meant? I was like, oh my God. It took me two and a half years to figure that out. All I had to do was work 40 hours a week, like I've always done, and do it every week, no matter what. When I'm sick, when I don't feel good, when I don't want to, when someone asks me to do something, I help them move or go to a barbecue or go to wherever. I, 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 I've been saying no my whole life because I had to work. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm like, that's it. And so I went and did 468K. Boom. Then what happened? Team started popping. Why? Because I could teach this. I've been teaching this 40 hour thing. I've taught this 12,000 times. I don't teach anything. What's the fucking point? You know what I mean? Can I teach the other stuff? Sure. But to me, it don't matter if you don't do this piece. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't want to work 40 hours? Okay. You know what it's going to feel like? 
It's going to suck for the rest of the time, right? You don't figure it will suck forever. Class over. I learned that. It didn't take long to figure that out. Why do most people quit? They don't work 40 hours, I promise you. I've done this in so many rooms where I'll get from each person, how many appointments, how many leads, how many recruiting, and we just do it. I've never had somebody get 40 hours when I do it with those three techs. I did it in one room with like 300 agents. Spoke from stage, did it. I took the top from different people. Who made the most dials, took their number. Who ran the most appointments, took their number. Who did the most recruiting interviews, took their number. We got to 36. That's the closest I've ever gotten. Taking the top three from three different people. So we built like the transformer of insurance agents. And didn't get 40 in a week. You know what I mean? And I'm like, all right, that sounds simple. Why don't I just teach that? Because I tripled my income in one year doing that. And it was like, over, I was like overnight, like everything in my world changed about overnight. By July, June or July, we had our summer sales conference that year. It was the first time ever anyone asked me to speak. I'd never spoken in my life at anything. <clears throat> Two and a half years in the business, no one knows me. Two months doing this, yo, can you speak on stage? I was like, no. <laughs> I ain't going the fuck up there. <laughs> you know? And it's been nonstop since. And all I've ever taught is this concept. Other people can teach you fancy sales, overcoming. I don't give a shit. I'm like, be who you are. Just work 40 hours. It will change the world. You know what I mean? And what, what I loved, what I learned is all the stuff that I want to get better at. I got really good at doing it every day. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then I'm like, yo, 40 hours, how do I get more efficient in my 40 hours? Oh, maybe I could be, now I can look at my numbers. Oh, I, maybe this guy's booking this many appointments versus me is booking that. Maybe I can get better here. Oh, let me study here. Oh, let me get better at this situation. When someone's 52 years old and they have, you know, 10 years left on their 30 year term that costs them 32 bucks a month. How do I, how do I overcome that? I didn't know how. Let me get better there. <clears throat> Same when you know what you're doing. You got a term policy? How long have you had that? 15 years? Right. Go grab that. Okay. Especially 200 bucks, you're kind of just flushing it down the toilet <clears throat> right now. I'm going to die in the next five years. Yeah. I got this this thing ain't complicated, you know. Where did you go from there? From, did you kind of talk about your story after that? Like, yeah. So that was personal production. The next, so our team, I'm trying to think, 2015, our team did. Uh, let me race a little bit because it it started to shift a lot. Because <clears throat> so we'll go. God damn, that was like super glued on there. In 2014, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Go no, personal team. Okay. I'll give you, this is gonna be more production. Yeah, I'll just give you that. I'll give you production. I'll tell you, the income to a point. I did 175, our team did like 185 total. So like 10 grand for the year outside of me. This is issue, Yeah, yeah. Like five writers did 10 grand for the year. So I was- That's what I was gonna ask, how many people were on your team? Yeah. yeah. Five. After I was all of it. Does so that make sense? 2013, I did like 60, something like that. In 2012, I was only in the business like three months. And I had no team that year. Like at all. I tried. No, no, literally, I couldn't get anyone fucking paid. 2015, 468. We did 1.1 million. with probably 20-ish riders, maybe. 
and on and off. That's just going to 40 hours a week. Yeah, dude, I'm still training on it today, literally. This is all I teach. Again, can I teach phone script? Yeah. But if you're running three appointments a week, I will not teach you phone script. I won't do it. I don't give a fuck because I'm not that good. I don't know how to make you a quarter million bucks on parts. I don't know how to do it. So, like, I'm not trying to be a dick. I don't know how to make people rich because people get into insurance for the same reason I did. They want to make a bunch of money. I don't know how to make you rich when the work is this little. I tried. I tried to teach phone script there. I tried to teach you, hey, how do I, hey, John, I know I haven't talked to you in three weeks. I'm getting back in it, man. Hey, I just had this objection. They said I want to think about it again. What do I do there? You work 40 hours, dude, call me back. You wouldn't, you wouldn't care if you worked 40 hours. You wouldn't call me. You wouldn't have got into that situation if you weren't desperate for that sale. You, you know what I mean? Like those, the things that got you that think about it wouldn't have happened had you done this path. So I'm going to prevent that, not teach you how to get out of the hole. I want to prevent it. I like preventing shit. Can I get you out of a hole? Sure. Will I teach him this ever again in my life? Never. I'll never tell him this again. You know what I'm saying? It's like one and done. Yo, let's prevent it from now on. Prevention. I'm not the best at like, how do I overcome all these fucking fancy objections? I mean, that's not me. I don't know that. I'm not that sales guy. The thing is, too, is I was told you're never going to try and turn a no into a yes. I leave before I get the no because my opinion is you see the no 58 times before you actually get it. No, I'm not talking about the phone. Anywhere. Like, yeah. I mean, it's, I just, I don't know. I got to the point where I had so many leads, there's any pushback. That's a good spot to get to. Because I don't want to drive, I was running four counties, 5,000 miles a month. I got to the point where I just build up my schedule, and if I was driving all over fucking Tampa Bay area to get to what I needed to do, it's what happened. I don't want to. Or somebody to be there. I think an hour, not going to be there. Again, it's it's a different approach when you're making money versus when you're not. For sure, you know what I'm saying. If she goes no and hang up, that don't help her. She's new and maybe she has money, maybe she don't. I don't know the answer. When I started, it was I had a stack of different leads. There was no's, there was maybe's, there was callbacks. I called all those back. Yeah, yeah there was some sales, and then yeah. you just. Confident enough yeah. You don't want to be there forever. You know, there there are le there are levels to learning this game. You know what I'm saying? Most are at entry point right now. It's like yo, we're trying to get to step two. Most don't have the the resources or the belief to spend the resources to have that belief level that yo, let me just spend it to get to the easy, if you will. And it's not easy per se, but after a while, you do learn how to like see things different. You can, you can see the yeses and nos a little more clearly after a few thousand fucking appointments. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can see stuff coming. You can see objections coming. You can see brick walls. You can, but at the beginning, it's muddy water, you know? So I, I just, I'm like, let's outwork it and let's, let's get there. There's steps to it, like school. I ain't trying to teach Maddox trigonometry to that. He ain't there yet. You know what I mean? Let's, you know, we're in sixth grade. Let's finish learning long division. You know what I mean? And we, we stay where we're at. And then we slowly teach people to level up. If I, if, if I teach too advanced too soon and they want, you know, call, no, hang up, I only want easy appointments, their perception of easy is different. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I have to be careful when I teach certain things as we go because I, I, I want it. I'll be honest. I want it to feel harder to them because in the mind of someone new, and I don't know how you came in, I came in bad. I didn't come in slinging insurance. It took me fucking two and a half years to sell over 20 grand. Like it took me a while. So I feel like I can relate to the overthinker and the timid and the no money, you know what I mean? And I'm like, ah, if I, if I, if I was taught a certain way, I'd have fucking been like, this just ain't working for me. So I try to like go like, all right, let me simplify it, but it is gonna be a lot of reps, a lot of hard work. And so one day it's not. <laughs> And it's still always some level of reps and hard work, but it's different. It's easy. It does get fucking easy. And you can learn to cherry pick stuff. And you can't, there's, there is a cool game to it that you eventually learn, you know.
but 16. Um, I wish Amanda was here. She would know the writer count better. I don't know the numbers. I'll ballpark the writer count. She had, we have an exact in spreadsheets. I did like 380, I think, personal that year. We did 2.8 million that year, probably with 30 to 40 people, something like that, ish. I probably made 650 that year. This year was a breakout year for us in a lot of ways. Um, I didn't sell that year. I maybe sold a little bit. I dinked around and like I dinked around a convention. I think I might have sold like 40 grand. I basically didn't sell that year. I came out. I I knew. Towards the last quarter of this year, I was getting out of the field here. I just didn't know how to do it. No one had done it at FFL yet. It was new. It was like, how do you stop selling? It was just, it was muddy waters. So I was trying to kind of figure it out. And I've been selling for five years. I'm like, the fuck do I do all day if I don't sell? I was nervous. I found it weird to be reliant on other people for my income. That, that was very hard. To, like, I was scared to get out of the field for that reason. Um, I didn't know how people would take me. I didn't know if they'd feel, you know what I mean? I just, this was a very difficult fucking mental year, a level I never saw coming. It was just things I didn't think of. Um, but we did 6 million that year. I made 1.8 million that year. And I've definitely never looked back since. Yeah. You're keeping probably 20, 30 points. Yeah, yeah, for sure. 20, 30 what? Points, meaning I was at a 140. We were starting people at 100, and there were people in the middle. So, you can basic math. It's not, you know, it's not that deep. So every 100 grand, I'm making net of chargebacks, advance money, 20, 30 Gs every 100 grand. You know what I mean? Like, it was crazy money. Uh, so, then we went to... 10, 10 million, actually, this one pisses me off. We did 9.99, it was like 9.986,000 or something. So I always say 10 million, but you get recognition for a Hall of Fame agency at 10 million. I missed, and we missed by like literally like 12 grand, 13. It was, I was pissed. Remember that year? What was the, what was, do you remember what the final was? I didn't, I didn't. I think it was 9.9 and like 60. Yeah, like we just missed. Yeah. Oh. I did like 392 and 22. Yeah. You know, I started in May. Yeah. But also like I was not very, I was not as consistent as I should have been. Yeah. I should have done over 600. So, we'll get my like two policies kind of stuff. 10 million there. We did, I want to say 22 million uh, writers. You want writers. 17, we had somewhere probably between 50 and 80 that year, beginning end of year. 18, I mean, it started to be like 100 plus, and I'll lose count after this, to be honest, on writers. We did like, I think it was like 50 million that year. John, let me ask you real quick. Now that you're out in the field, hold your thought. Don't. I. I, I want to answer. I, my brain's processing. We did 209 million here. We did 150 there, and I think we've just cracked 100 million there. And we had 6,000 writers here. I don't remember how many. I kind of forget. Somewhere between 100 and 6,000. <laughs> They jumped, you know what I mean? Here was probably like four to 500, you know what I mean? And then we started getting like fucking thousand plus. I mean, it starts jumping like crazy because here I was the only person doing it. And then I started teaching this stuff. So we, I, so the reason this started jumping was because we started teaching work 40 hours or I won't work. I won't personally work with you. I ain't mad that you're here, but go over there with part-timers, expect it to suck forever, no complaining. There's a room over there for y'all. And you can't complain to each other or you leave. It's just a no complaining part-time room. I let them stay. But there's only so many times I can tell you to work more and things will get better, right? So we put them over there, over here. And what I did is Mark didn't know this. I, now we laugh about it. 
but I was competing with him to create Hall of Fame producers. So we used to track how many we had. So my goal was to keep up with Mark with how many people direct. He didn't know I was tracking his, but he was well known for being able to produce Hall of Fame. He had and Hall and Persina and all those guys were killing it. And I'm like, yo, he's printing Hall of Fame producers. I want to do that shit. I didn't want to be the only one. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, yo, let me, that's our goal. Let me print Hall of Fame producers. 400K, here's how you get there. My roadmap was 40 hours. All right, here's a roadmap. Let me hire people like me that are willing to work up. We had a bunch of blue collar, like, kind of in their own mind, you know, dipshit, just hardworking people. You know what I mean? Like, not in a mean way, just, yo, let's work. You know? And again, I can teach you some sales stuff. Work 40 hours, I'll give you all the, I'll give you all that. Because I'm not as good below, you know what I mean? But I can get you from like, maybe you write six apps, I can help you get eight. I can tweak a little to get you some more sales. I'm booking 15, 18 appointments, I can get you to 25. Or you're writing one app, I ain't getting you to eight, 10, I don't, 40 hours. I don't know how to say it's so cool that you go from one day, I don't know. Book three appointments, I don't know how to get to 20 with a script, I don't, I don't fucking know. Someone else will make up, pretend they know, and they'll tell you an answer, but they, and they're probably charging you for a course. I'm, <laughs> I'm not doing it. You know what I mean? So I just started teaching 40 hours, 400K, 40 hours, 400K. But I didn't expect everyone to do it, but I knew I could get people there. You know what I mean? And then I just started defining here's what full time looks like, here's what part time looks like. You make the choice. Here's how you get there. Map it out. You know what I mean? Maybe yours is a thousand phone calls and 25 appointments. You know what I mean? Like maybe for you it's slightly different. I just knew my 40. John went more 40 hours. You know what I'm saying? And if you complain, I'm gonna bust your hours up. Hey, what's yours? 28, really? Stop. And we, you know what I mean? And that's how I built it. And I still, to this day, and it works. I taught other people. So I started here, it was all me, direct. The, here, there was really no teams yet. I had 50 agents direct to me. Huh? Oh my God, I was stacked. That's how I made that. <laughs> I was stacked. Now, what's the downside? I was on the phone nonstop, 24 7. Dude, I'm not a, I don't. If you're not willing to build, I don't stack shit. I tried that, it don't work. If I take him, I go, yo, I'm gonna stack you, right? Duplication is the key. Don't forget your question. Duplication is the key to this thing, okay? So let's pretend I stack some. I go, yo, I got 100 agents. Here's 25 for you, here's 25 for you, 25 for you, 25 for you. Cool, go manage, right? Sounds great. How does he give his guy 25? Sure, the same thing. He never he never learned how to get any. Got to train first. <laughs> oh, I got I got to do the work for you to no, build your training me, so I can train your guy. I'm the, the bottom guy. I'm, but I'm going to train you after I give you 25 agents. No, no, no. no. Yeah. Right. Why don't I teach you how to manage fucking one? Exactly. Yes, that's all of it. Yes, that's all of it. Because no one knows how to manage shit. No one knows how to build. Right. Didn't build shit. You got to give them to you. Cut it out. I don't. That shit don't. We tried it. It doesn't work. You know what I mean? Here's 25 guys. He wouldn't know what the fuck to do. <laughs> Be a shit show. And again, it works one layer. How does he duplicate? Hey, John, Steve wants his 25. That's welfare. <laughs> I grew up on it. That's welfare, literally, by definition. I'm like, nah, my mom was like, nah, we ain't doing that shit. Uh-uh, we're moving to Beverly, I'm gonna get a job. You're going to learn this. Stop the welfare stuff. Cut it out. You know what I mean? Can it get you some food when you break? Sure. But does it work long term? No, dude, there's just more people on welfare. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like if I stack, I'm not a stack guy. Now, if you're working your face off building and I'm busy as shit and she comes to me, I go, hey, Brian, can you help her? I, can't, I don't have time to give her what she needs today. And to be honest, I'm not fucking good enough at the things she needs. How do I go to America's E app? How the fuck do I know? I ain't done that in seven years. I have no idea how to do that anymore. Yo, call Brian. He's really good at that. You know what I mean? And I can help at a different level. She starts working 40 hours, doing a bunch of stuff, building it big. She needs more than Brian can help. We're like, hey, come back over here. I got you. I know that stuff. You know what I'm saying? But first, Testing both of them. Is he willing to do what he, he says he wants to build? Is he willing to help her take care of her? 
And is she willing to do what he says? Or is she going to overthink everything? Because I don't want no damn overthinkers. I'm like, you know, I'm over here. <laughs> you know what I mean? So for me, it's like I, I supplement. You know, I'm a big supplement guy. You know what I mean, if you're doing what it takes, we're like, yo, lead, here's some extra leads. You already calling enough leads. I just want to help. I got them sitting around. You'll have some money. Hey, here you go. I've done that. That works really good. When I go, hey, free leads. Come over here. I got you. I know you won't work. Here's free leads. That shit don't work. You know, we try it with three. I've give out I've given out. We even tried it again a few months ago, giving out recruiting appointments. I can I can get unlimited recruits in the door. Literally unlimited. I can get unlimited interviews with people looking for positions. What can I get? People want to do the interviews, take the time with them, figure out what they need, work. coach them, so work. the work part. Yeah, see, that's why you did it. That's why I did give a bit of my business. Someone else because the reward was correct. Yeah. And I am new to the game, but I see that there's a flaw and you brought it up. Is that people aren't signed into that, so there's a disconnect. Correct. They don't want to help because yeah. there's not payoff. Correct. So it has to be directly tied. You have to be tied into the bridge. Yeah. You're going to put it through the hustle, you're going to get paid. That's, yeah. why, you know, that's why you're doing the business. Yeah. You know, I, there was a lot for me helping people that weren't direct to me because I learned a lot about people. So when we did have people direct to me, so when I was selling a bunch, dude, I was teaching people that, like, to a point where my mentor was like, yo, you have to stop taking everybody's phone call. I'm like, but I'm helping him. Help. He's like, you don't get paid. I'm like, I got it. But they're getting paid. He's like, yeah, but you're miss. You're not recruiting because you're focused on this guy's. So yes, it helps. I get what you're doing, but you're missing all these people over here. I was like, oh, I didn't see that. Oh, I didn't see all the ones over there. He's like, yeah, because you ain't talking to them, dipshit. You're busy over here because this guy's taking advantage because you're nice and you're willing to help. So there's this weird little balance. You know what I mean? So at one point, 2017 was a year. I was like, all right, done. Now, as it started getting up, I'm like, all right, you can jump on my call, get on my team. You know what I mean? I'm never going to shut people up fully, come to things like this. Dude, I help people not even with the company, still to this day. You know what I mean? No, I help people with our competitors. I didn't even ask you who you work. Conference, right? I didn't even know where you work. <laughs> you know what I mean? I assume it ain't here, but I don't, I don't care. Does it make sense? Because it is what it is. It'll all work out for me in the long run. You know, so again, it was like 40 hours, teach people to hit 40, 40, 400 K, 40 K a month, call 35, 36, whatever the average is to get there. You know, if they want to do the work, great. And if they're not, it's going to suck forever. That's the path. You know what I mean? And then, but giving people grace to change also. You know what I mean? And again, for me, if you're not coachable, that's, that's a killer for me. And coachable means as simple as like, stop fucking overthinking and stop meaning I'm having a conversation. I won't keep teaching. <laughs> so next event, remind me I picked on you twice. Right. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I don't remember. Where was it? It was at the fall sales conference. Where? Oh, the, you were in the front row. Yeah, was, the fucking dialing. You yeah. didn't believe in yourself. Exactly. Fuck yeah. I remember yes. This. All right. Yes. So I remember this. You've changed since then. I have. I remember that day. I have. You were overcomplicating yeah. script. Exactly. I and so that. I took what you said. Yeah. And I, it. I remember that day. That's the day Anika was up there helping me. That's yeah. the day I met the dudes from Lynn were there up teaching too. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't place it before. It's like a, I didn't spend a lot of time thinking about it, but because no. you know, I do it a lot. Yeah. You're, I promise you're not the only one. Everywhere I go, it's what I do. And most eventually, thank you for some. And I've learned how to do it a little less harmful than I used to. Where, where's your question? Yes, so, uh, when you're teaching in the beginning, Bring people in and present your experience and teach them the way it's like 140 hours. So, so <clears throat> meet people where they're at. Yeah, great question. Can I erase this to you up here? Yeah. I like my 285 picture. <laughs> um, is food here, Amanda? I don't know. It is cool. What'd you get? Um, so, I used to. But that was me putting everyone in one bucket. And that was me projecting expectations on people. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so I learned that was, it sounded good and everyone will nod their head at me and give me a thumbs up. And then they get frustrated when I push them or challenge them. You know what I mean? And ask them why they didn't do what I think they should be doing. 
So I had to learn to kind of like I just alluded to a second ago, kind of put people in buckets almost, if you will. Um, but more importantly, I had to find out where people are at, hence the questions. Some of y'all thankfully answer. Um, where people want to go and then what they're willing to sacrifice here to get where they verbally say they want to go. Does that make sense? So this is where they're at, so the starting point. I, I, I watched this guy teach, I think it's that Coach Burt. He's like, this is A, this is B. You know, in a really simple way. So when you said you spent a lot of 2017 trying to figure out like what to do for the team, don't so much in the pre I think you said that was me when did you okay? How did you spend your 40 hours a week that day? A lot, of, lot more recruiting okay. um, and a ton more ton more time with people understanding this i didn't up to 2017 i didn't really i didn't really understand this i was like yo we're gonna come in and run through walls if you're not i won't talk to you run through walls or i don't talk to you run through walls or i don't talk to you 40k or yeah i just blew people out you know what i mean and then i i don't know i don't know what clicked probably a lot of mentors and training and i don't have the exact moment it changed i think it evolved over time but the way I always explain it, like she got Chick-fil-A, like, what are they called? What's that thing called? Yeah, the, yeah, the cool wraps and a pla platter, is that the right word? A little cool wrap, platter, whatever. And if I said we were gonna go out and build Chick-fil-A's all across the country, okay? And we're only going to find people to work at these Chick-fil-A's who also only want to build and own Chick-fil-A's. How successful would that model be for Chick-fil-A? Wouldn't work at all. Why? Yeah. Correct. Some guys just want to go and sweep the fucking floor, dude. Yeah. Amen. Why am I mad? Yeah. Now, what is frustrating, and I took the blame for, is if you only want to sweep the floor, but you want to make what the Chick-fil-A owners make it. Now there's a disconnect. But if you just want to sweep the floor and make whatever they make, I think robots make 18 bucks an hour now. I don't know what people make. Who am I to be mad? Can I slowly challenge you as I get to know you? Sure. Can I ask you questions and lead you to a bigger light? Can I show you things? Sure, I can do all that. But to be mad that you want to sweep floors? That was me, right? Because I knew where you were at, maybe, but I never really found out where you want to go. And I definitely didn't find out this. This is fucking big, dude. And behind sacrifice, it's fucking work. It's action. You know what I'm saying? So if you're on a recruiting call and you kind of have them lay out where they're at, where they want to go, yeah. and you go over the proper expectations, yeah. So you and they say, well, I was kind of just want to do this. You just say, okay, this is what your results are likely going to be. If that's, you know, aligned with the timing, Chris tolerance, you know, Boston, or you just kind of say, yeah, so, yeah, for me, it's so when I'm recruiting, number one, coachable. Number two, do what you say you're going to do. Number three, if you can't do that one, Communicate with me. That's my rules to work with me. Be coachable. Do what you say you're going to do. Communicate with me. Does that make sense? I mean, if you keep overcomplicating stuff, I'm out. If you don't, you'll tell me what you're going to, what you want to do, all day long. You'll tell me. But what you do. If you don't do it, I'm out. And if you too often call me and go, yo, I can't do it because of ABC. Like I had, I used to only have two, but then I realized like I have to have some grace with people in life because shit happens and life is real and things do come up. But if grandma dies four times this month, I'm out. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. I just can't. Mentally, personally handle it. I break down, that's where I lose it. I get, I get frustrated, Emo I can't control my emotions. I'm not the person I'm telling you y'all should be, I lose it. 
So I started defining who I can work with. And these are really simple. Be coachable. If you, meaning if you're not coachable, it means you're not listening to my advice, which makes me wonder why do we speak? I don't understand it. Like if we talk and you don't listen, then you keep calling me. I'm like, this is really fucking confusing to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it happens. And I used to let people keep making the calls. I'm like, yo, 40 hours. Yeah, but I work 12. How do I? Wait, what? The answer was this. You, didn't do, you know what I mean? Like, even if I give them a real answer, hey, do it like this. Buy these leads. Call this way. Do that. Whatever it is. The, the actual nuts and bolts. And they don't. You know what I mean? Hey, what do you do if they had cancer three years ago? And it spread. And they're on blood pressure meds. And they take nitro. Here's what you do. Tomorrow. Hey, remind me what you said about cancer? I said, check the underwriting guide. Hang up. I'll teach you once or twice, but I'm not, dude, I'm not your guy forever. I'm not your answer guy forever. i am guide you to information. Coachable. Learn things. Learn the bit. Week one, I'm in. Dude, you call me about what to do with a medicine? I'm zero chance I'm having that conversation. Sure. I just, yeah. Does it make sense? Call Different examples across the board. You know what I mean? My Wi-Fi is out. I can't get to insurance toolkits. What do I do? You should have a fucking underwriting guy. That's what you should do. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to be professional. It is what it is. There's solutions to... So for me, this was recruiting. And I talk about this on the call. I need you to be coachable. Here's what I'm looking for. I'm out printing money, selling life insurance. I'm looking for people who want to do more for their family like I did for mine. I had a lot of help getting where I'm at. I'm looking for people to teach and help grow. Here's what I need from you if you're going to work for me. Hey, how's your comp work? Yeah, great question, dude. I'll get to that. But I have questions for you first. Who are you? Where are you at? Where do you want to go? What do you want to sacrifice? Here's what I'm looking for. You need to be coachable. Do the shit you say you're going to do it if you can't communicate with me. If you don't do those three things, I'm 100% sure I'll quit you before you quit me. I tell every interview that. Do you find better success with bringing in unlicensed people or licensed? I don't give a shit. People are people. I don't care. I don't need to work really well, to be honest. <laughs> It's all scale member. You know what I mean? I, I'm 100% sure if you think hiring licensed people is magic, you'll be wrong. You know what I mean? I, I, I can almost see more problems. The longer they're licensed, the less likely I'm going to hire them. Because I'm looking on an interview to say no. My whole interview is designed to find a reason to say no. I don't, find, I don't interview people to find ways to work with them. That's not my angle. My angle is to get off the phone as fast as possible so I can move on to the next person or go finish golfing. So if you or playing with Maddox or whatever I'm doing. 10, if you have 100 recruiting calls, how many yeses do you have? Or an average of 5, 10? How many times am I saying yes? Yeah. Meaning, you have 100 calls, how many do you bring? I bet I'm off the phone with 70 of them in under 5 minutes. Like that. Do you understand leads, commission only, 1099? Huh? Off the phone. T two minutes or less. 70%. I did a two minute conversation. Hey, man, I'm just calling to I, took, I give them no info on me or who we are. I don't have to. I'm making money without it. They need me or someone like me. You know what I'm saying? In our industry, it's backwards. People call me to go, like, hey, I want to compare you to Joe. Okay. Call Joe, ask him the difference between us. I got to go. I'm not that guy. I don't, I'm not pitching people, dude. I used to, but I don't care. You know what I mean? So for me, I'm off the phone with most of them. Yeah, I'd probably, again, of the 30 I have a conversation with, I don't know, dude. Maybe half would make it to the end of the phone call. 15%. Maybe. And that doesn't mean they even get started. I'm, I'm just saying they made it to the end of the phone call. And I end all of my phone calls. That just means I didn't blow you out. And I end all of them with like, yo, you got any questions? They go, nah, I'm good. All right, cool. Have a good day. Move on. Why? I'm looking for someone to go, what do I do next, bro? I'm ready to get started. If that ain't my answer at the end of the phone call, I don't continue. I don't go, hey, sound good, man. Would you like me to send you contracting? Nah. Yo, any other questions? I'm good, man. Makes sense. Everything good. You got any other questions? So Fuck yeah, when can I start? After that. Okay, so you don't send them contracts until they say that. <laughs> I don't send nobody. I'm begging people to work with me, no. Okay. What about the beginning, John? When, you know what I mean? Yeah. 
How was that different? And would you like? No, at the beginning, I pitched everything. Yeah. I told everyone they could get rich easily because so and so said they could from stage, and you could just buy fucking eight leads, and you can make four point two million dollars a minute. And you can get, hey, here's your comp, and you get a raise like this, and you can recruit like this, and you can build a big agency doing this, and oh my God, the overrides are this, and this guy made $8 million, da, 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 and we have the best training, and we have the best this, and we have the best events, and we have the best, I gave him all the stuff. And I was like, are you there? Right. Hello? Hello? Oh, shit. I guess he hung up. You know what I mean? It was a pitch fest, dude. I'm like, what am I doing? Right? And I hired a lot of those people. They're like, yeah. And what happens? Most of them don't do the fucking pre license sign up, much less finish the course. They don't even sign up. No, they didn't sign up the course. They don't even get licensed. You know what I mean? Or they get on the phone and they expect to make $8.2 million in 12 minutes because you told them that's how the industry works. You know what I mean? So I'm like, yo, if you drop a thousand dollars on leads in the first day, forty people tell you to fuck off, how are you gonna handle it? That's one of my interview questions. Just like that. You know what I mean? Hey, how's your comp work? Bro, I'll get to comp. Do you mind if I ask you some questions first to see if you're even a good fit for me? I flip, I take it right back. You know what I mean? I'm in control of the whole thing. My goal is to ask enough questions where I understand this. That's it. That's all I want to understand. Because if I can't give them a path to this, what am I doing? You know what I mean? My whole job is to guide them here. That's it. There's, no, there's nothing else for me to do. My job is not to teach them script. My job is not to teach them carrier stuff. My job is not to teach them product. My job isn't to teach them when the next training is and what time it is and how to get the email reminder. It's not my job. You know what I'm saying? Now, can I go like, hey, here's the website. Go there, read it, here's all the stuff. You sign up to everything. Sure, I can give them a little, I can guide them to it. But I'm not good, I'm not, I don't have to beg them. You know what I mean? So it's to coach them and guide people towards information that they can consume. 1099, dude. You know what I mean? People on the other end, you're interviewing, that's 1099. One day I figured out, you know how else is 1099? This guy. So you ain't gotta work here. And I ain't got to work with you. And I'm the one making the money. So who was the one in control? I was. And even when I wasn't making the money, I had access to the people that were teaching me to make the money. All right? So the thought process was, I'm going to be making the money. They're definitely not making the money. I'm further down this path than they are. Even if I'm only here, they're only here. I'm further ahead. I Meaning you're brand new in the field. You don't know nothing. You're afraid to go into a house. I'm like, shit, you're licensed. You're further than the client. They definitely don't know shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you overcomplicate product, who overcomplicates product? The client. How are we taught how insurance works? We die, we give you a check. Every carrier, every product works the same way. Die, get a check. All the stuff in the middle, do you think anyone gives a shit about? How they came up with pricing, actuarial science, you know what I mean? A rating, not A rating. Dude, none of that really matters. Yeah. That's cool. She called me and she's like, are we an agent, a producer, or a broker? <laughs> yeah, I told her. We're, we're all the same. But my boyfriend's saying that. You ever hear people say like IMO, FMO, C? Right, yeah. I don't know the difference to this dagger. I don't, you know. I don't know the difference. The <laughs> MGA, GA, I don't know the difference. I literally do, I would fail if I had to like do a paper on the difference between. I don't know the answer. I don't care. Now you get a check. You work 40 hours, you print money. That's the business to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? You wanna work here? Cool. Where are you at? Where do you wanna go? What do you wanna sacrifice? I mean, I have to figure that out. You work 40 hours a week now? Cool, where, where do you commute? What do you do? What time do you get home? What's your wife think? Does she know you're getting into this? Do you have money to spend? Do you like, I'm figuring, do you have kids? Do you have soccer? Do you have church? Do you go Wednesday nights? Do you go Sunday? Do you go both? Are you in prayer group? Like, what do you do? Because to add this, you're gonna have to sacrifice some of that shit. Does that make sense? So if you do all that now, where do you see yourself putting this in? What are you giving up to add this? Because there's no new hours. So I need you to tell me what you're gonna give up to add this. 
to see if you're even a good fit for me. Yeah, man, I've been thinking about it. We're going to give up. You know, my wife and I, we talked. I'm going to give up weekends of soccer for a little while. You know what I mean? Sundays, I have to do Sundays. Church is our thing. But here, after work, I, I'm in. Hey, man, I really only want to do this a little bit. I'm just going to do it on the side a little bit. I run another business over here. Cool, I'm in. Where you Where you want to go? Cool. Matt, can he have all my time? He wants to do a little bit? No. Is it going to be inconsistent? Yes. Am I going to tell him that? 100%. <laughs> that makes sense? But this is the model for me. That's it. I still do it to this day. You know, all my questions are trying to figure out this stuff. How they communicate, if they're going to be coachable. You know what I mean? You talk to me from another company and you're negative as shit. I want nothing to do with you. My wife was paying me out. Oh, he sobbed up. It's all blame. All blame. And I, trust me, first to know. Uplines. You know what I mean? I get it. But at the end of the day, every single person I've ever asked this question to, hey, you're at company ABC. There's someone there making over a million bucks, right? Yeah. Why, are you, why is it not you? I'm in to help. But if you're going to blame him, who are they going to blame next? I'm out. I just, you know what I mean? So I, there, has, there can only be so much of it for me. You know what I mean? I'm like, ah, if it's too much, I get no support, whatever. Like, I can kind of somewhat maybe look past that one. But if it continues negative, 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 I'm like, I'm going to deal with that all day. I'm good. Why? If I deal with that, I miss three people over here. Right? So I started defining who was going to work here. If it, wasn't. it wasn't me who stopped being like, yo, bring everyone. What do they say? Throw it against the wall, hope it sticks. That model sucks. You know, not that I had a perfect one. And we've had way more people quit than stay. I'll tell you that for sure. It's not even close. The number's not close. But they stopped quitting because of me. They started quitting because they weren't willing to do this. You know what I'm saying? If you quit because you ain't willing to do that, I'll sit there right there and watch you lose your house. I don't give a shit at all. So they gave you a path out, you don't follow. We only do. Sorry. I can't. If I watch you, you know what I mean? Like, feel bad. But I'm over here. I'm not being mean, staring at you, like, poking, but I'm like, I gotta go over here and help more people. You quit on yourself. I'm out. You know saying? You do this? Business stuff, sales stuff, over to jet. That stuff's so easy to teach. You know what I mean? And implement. So, I'm like, you know, let me just focus on this stuff. And this can change. They may be like, yo, I'm only wanna go right here. But then someone saw that all those numbers today and they're like, um, I kind of want to go here now. Watch now. You know what I mean? My goal at the beginning, when I first got started, my goal was to make 70 grand. That's it. 2012. I want to make 70 G's. 100 didn't cross my mind. 100 grand didn't get on my radar till the following year, 2013 for 14. And then by that time, then it went to 250. And then I have it upstairs. Like, we should have brought them. But I think, I think 15 is the first year I wrote I want to make a million bucks. And it took till 2015. Yeah. yeah. It's the first time I ever that I could vision that. Where 2012, I could only vision 70 grand. So three years, this stretch is the people I was around. The environment it was in. It grows fast, right? Yeah. And I saw the people doing it. And I'm like, if offense, they can fucking do it. Like, why not me? I have that, dude. I've given that. Yo, if they can do it, why not me? Yeah. I, dude, I'm flush with that. I got a big old bucket of that. You need that, I think. You know what I mean? This, not everyone has it, dude. Yeah. That's well, I didn't have big vision. I just didn't see the hundred grand. I didn't see. I didn't know. I didn't see it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But as soon as I see it, it's over. Now I see guys making. I know guys making a million a week. That's great. I'm like, yo, why not me? So people get excited where I'm at. I'm like, eh. I, just, I don't know, dude. My vision's too far now. What I see is too big. So I'm, it sucks to say because some people get annoyed by it, but I'm like, I'm, I'm happy, but I'm not satisfied. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I just, I don't know, dude. I, I like to do more. For me, that's, I love the chase. I love the build of it. I mean, I love the figuring out, navigating of challenge. Yeah. Oh, we're going to overcome this thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, and that doesn't go away. You know how many frustrations there are trying to figure out how to go from where I'm at to making a million a week? I don't even have a fucking clue how to do that. Well, like, like, at all. You, you're seeing the top line. Like, I, sometimes I'm focused down here. You know what I mean? Like, you're like there. Mm -hmm. like, what if they, you know, bring in more debt than, you know, maybe the profit? 
You're just focused on like, hey, can you work? That's it, dude. Can you actually put in reels? Yeah. Now, I'll man I, there's plenty of ways to manage stuff like that. I don't ignore the stuff. Right. You know what I'm saying? I watch my business, dude. I'm watching that. So for me, it's, we'll, guess we'll go and eat in a minute. From here, I'm watching this. Does this match this? Because this is what you said. So do these align? It's all I watch. Because I've been burned by this. 99.9% of people I've ever spoken to kill me on that. You know what I mean? How you know I many people tell me they want to make money, they want to make and do make more and do more, da da da, and then I get a tummy ache and I'm like, all right. I, I don't say anything, but I got it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll be there at this time. You don't think we know who was early here and who wasn't? Like we see it. Now I don't judge, but I, I notice. I can't help it. You know what I'm saying? Like we see that's just too, and after a while, you get like. Again, I was late once and I did 87 things. Dude, that gets forgotten. You know what I mean? But I'm late and I did the, and I did the, and I did the, and we got, we got all these over here and you got like three over here. Eventually, it's separates. It's easy to see over time. You know what I mean? So it's just like mental, like mental notes. Oh, he didn't do what he said he would again. Oh, he didn't do what he said he would again. Interesting. All right, you didn't do what he said he would again. One day you get sniped. Oh, weird. You don't answer my phone calls anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. This is what it is. You know what I mean? And I tell everyone this. I don't hide it. I don't, I, I, what I'm doing, I do it. Oh, I'm like, yo, this is how it's going to work. I'm literally, I'm going to give you something to do. I'm going to test you to see if you do it. And if you don't do it enough times, I'm out. I will, I, I promise you I'll fucking quit before you quit me. That's like saying, what price do I show a client? I don't know nothing about this. I don't. There's no, there's not. You know what I mean? It's all relative to this. What do they want? You know what I mean? How quick do they want it? How much money do they have? Do we have to build up to it? You know what I mean? Do you have time or money? So you don't tell people how to get capital. Hmm? Like you don't tell people. Like I mean, how often am I talking to someone who has the capacity to have that conversation get an insurance. Yeah, never. That's an outlier conversation. You know what I mean? Like, if we look at the whole concept of like, it's gonna be really ugly, but the bell curve, you know what I mean? I think, I think this is like 68% of people fall into this shit. And these little, I don't know what the other lines mean or are, but these are like outliers, like one-off situations. Like guys who come in and write 40 Gs a month off the rip, I don't train on those. Why? Because almost everyone's here. Does that make sense? Conversation. That's an outlier. What's the average person's in your experience personal production? Is it five grand? The average person zero. The first one. Yeah, zero. Because the average agent quits. I mean, the average agent that actually quits. Low as fuck. The average agent in the company does five grand a month. You know what I mean? So if I'm interviewing you, I'm like, why? Do you only want to be average? That's my question. I don't answer the question. I'm like, yeah. why are you asking me that? You only want to be average, bro? No, I know why you want to. But if we're interviewing, you know what I mean? It's low as fuck. It, it literally, the average is zero because the average agent quits before they get started. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I try to see all that shit coming and I test them along the way with little things like, hey, when you, you know, getting into class. Hey, dude, you want to get, yeah, hey, man, I want to get started. Cool. Like, any other questions? No, I'm ready to go. All right, what do I do? You got to get in class. Is there any reason you can't start class today? I'm on vacation. I can start Tuesday. Cool. Hey, Amen. No, no reason at all. I can start today. Cool. I'm going to send you the link. You go online, you register, Amanda will send you instructions. Everything's in there. You follow it step by step. Super easy. Now, keep in mind, my dog could get the, his license in under three weeks. Okay? So, most people that are trying to do it quick can get through the course in five days or less. Are you trying, let me ask you a question. Are you trying to do this thing fast or slow? After I just set the guideline of what fast or slow is. Well, what are they gonna say? Try to do it fast, cool. So if it takes you two weeks, remember coachable, do what you say you're gonna do. You can do it in five days, yep. Now if you don't, 
All good. I'm just going to assume you quit. Is that okay? Me too. They go, yes. Okay, cool. All right, here's the thing. I'm going to send you the course now. Register. Do me a favor. When you register, can you shoot me a text so I know you're in? Yep. Cool. If you don't text me tonight, I'm going to assume you quit, okay? I do that all along the way. I just, there's always a test. Action. Because you said you would do it. Did I ask you needing questions? Yep. Because I'm not an idiot. <laughs> it is sales. Does that make sense? Now, you can say no to those questions, and I'm not offended. No, dude, it's going to take me a month. I want to go slow as shit. I'm working on my master's degree. My kids have four sports. I'm going to, amen, cool. I'll send it to you, dude. Shoot me a text when you're done. If I get a text in three months, I get a text. If I don't, I don't. Who cares? You know what I'm saying? If we're open, I'm in. Now again, can you eat all my time if you're going to take three months? No. Do I let them know that? Yes. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, it's always very intentional to lead people. I want them to understand. I don't want anyone to be confused about this the entire time. This is, I lived by this. You know, and I try to be that. So now, you ever like tell someone you'll do something and you really don't want to fucking do it? Hey, you want to go hang out this week? Hey, you want to go? Hey, you want to go here? Want to go? So I live by this. So if I'm like, yeah. Hey, Amanda, how many trips do you think? So I travel probably 60 times a year. I'm on like 60 flights. How many of the 60 do I come to you or call you and go, fuck, I really don't want to go? All of them. You did vacation ones that are not really. All of them. But I said yes. So how many do I cancel? Let's go. I just go. I don't care. I'd go, dude. I, I mean, dude, if I cancel fucking one a year, it's like something happened. You know what I mean? I just, dude, I try. And so if I'm now, I've learned to just, you know, I got to say no. If I don't, if I don't want to go now, I'm at a point in life where I'm like, fuck it. I don't want to go. I just got to let her say that. I'm just telling people now. I don't want to do it. And my wife taught me one of the coolest things ever. No is a full sentence. I used to have to go no because, and I would literally make shit up. Maddox has a baseball tournament this weekend. And then I post on social by the pool. <laughs> yeah, it got canceled. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, dude, I don't like that. How about, nah, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm out. You know what I mean? Like, I got invited to uh, College World Series. Comes up in June, June, July, I don't know what it was. And I'm like, tell the guy, I'm like, yeah, sounds fucking dope. And as I said yes, I also said, I'll let you know. I was like, yeah, it sounds really cool, but let me let you know. Because my gut was like, fucking Nebraska in the middle of summer to watch college baseball, which I watched zero, to get a free dinner with a carrier and hang out with some people. I'm like, so I'm like, three days, I'm like, I told him, I'm like, I don't think I want to go. And I go home and my wife's like, you should probably go. It's good people. I'm like, I don't think I want to go. Four days later, I sent him, I'm like, yo, I can't go. One sentence, yo, like, sorry, I can't do that. You've got some Oscar. I mean, I thought about making an excuse why, and I'm like, how about I just sing? You know what I mean? Is he gonna lose any sleep? I don't give a shit, I'll write someone else. You need to work on my no with one sentence. With it's hard. With my kid. It's hard. I'm not saying it applies in every situation, but sometimes, just be like, no. You know, and I'm fortunately in a situation where I can say no a lot more than I used to be able to. I used to, to say yes to a lot of stuff. So you guys are gonna have to do a lot of things that you don't want to do, and you're saying no now, and you should be saying, fuck, I have to do it anyway. I still do a ton of stuff that I don't want to do that's valuable for what I'm trying to achieve. I'm traveling next week on my anniversary. I'll be out of town on my anniversary. Travel this week after that. Most people won't do that. I'm like, yo. Huh? You just celebrated a different day. And my wife is hey, baby, you love it. She's not that. You know what I mean? It's like whatever. So me and Amanda are going, and I don't know if Reese is coming. Is he coming? Yeah, so me and Amanda and Reese are going to be traveling on that. You know what I mean? Most, most people wouldn't do it. Now, Steph was like, ah, 
I'm like, hey, you think what are we doing? Da, da, da. We talked about it. She's like, do that, do you? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I still do a lot of things that. I mean, like, would it be cool to be home and go to a nice dinner and drink some nice wine? Yeah, but I can fucking do that on Sunday. Who cares? You know what I'm saying? So a lot of where you want to go, you're gonna have to. And I still sacrifice a lot today. You know I mean? Yeah, I have a lot of fucking time off, and I spend a ass ton of money traveling. And I don't. After 15,000 lifetime miles, just on Delta. Yeah. Travel, you know, all of them. I, I say yes to a lot, and then I have anxiety sometimes where I'm like, I don't really want to do it. I don't feel like it. I don't really want to speed. And I just I get worked up in my head. But I'll, honestly, most of the time when I get there, I enjoy the time. I'm not like miserable. I just, it's the, it's the yes to the getting there that comes. Yeah, you know, so I've learned to just like know that's me and that feeling and it'll be okay. You know what I mean? And afterwards, I always feel good. I make yeah. a good relationship. I meet someone, something cool happens. I impact someone like it always works out, you know, but it's, again, I'm, I still deal with that level of anxiety sometimes of just stuff, you know, it's like, I don't know. But for me, that line is like way down there somewhere. And now we get to choose different sacrifices, but I still sacrifice a lot. Mm -hmm. Relative, a lot of people. A lot of people ask why I still work. I'm like, what? I don't understand that. But I get it a lot. Yeah. You know. Did you want to send a million dollars a week for a day? A day? Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of people doing that. There's a fuck ton of people doing it. That's what I've learned. Like the crazy thing is, the more money I've made, the more I realize how little I make. It's funny, you get in different rooms and stuff, yeah. Yeah, that's wild, so. Um, she got Chick-fil-A, if y'all wanna do something, we can chill, grab some, grab some lunch, grab some food, maybe start back in 30 minutes or so. We'll do some stuff, answer some questions, and call her out a couple hours.